Before we continue, we want to share a word from our sponsor. Yes, we have a sponsor, a great sponsor, actually. Want to know how us DJs stay relaxed and engaged within this crazy industry? Our friends at Happy Valley Premium Cannabis Dispensary located in East Boston have held us down with essential pre-rolls, cartridges, vegan fruit drops, and Fingers' favorite, dark chocolate bars. At Happy Valley, their mission is to unlock the premium cannabis experience by providing consistent quality products and exceptional customer service anchored by industry-leading technology. And guest listeners, they have not disappointed. They provide some of the highest quality products in Massachusetts and are leading the charge to create a premium cannabis experience for you. Visit Happy Valley East Boston today to get 20% off a single accessory with the promo code DOPE. And tell them, but I know the DJ sent you. Let's go! But I know the DJ. Do you? Welcome to episode 42 of But I Know the DJ, the original New England podcast discussing all things DJing, music, nightlife, business, and pop culture through the unfiltered opinions of hosts, Snacks. Give me Snacks, baby. AKA Snacks on, Snacks off, DJs, Fingers, and Candy D, powered by Dope Entertainment. We've had an amazing relaunch with our rebrand as we dive back into our bi-weekly cadence here. The feedback has been amazing. We appreciate y'all for listening and sending us positive vibes and energy. Seriously, it makes us super excited to get back in and keep these conversations moving. With that being said, we have tons to talk about, a few topics that we put together, as well as introducing a new segment where we ask the guest listeners to send in any questions or topics, so we'll be going going over those as well. So let's dive right in. We have my co-hosts, extremely talented and experienced DJs, Fingers, and Cami V, to help me break down the first topic and question. Bomber Trump! Damn you! Diving right in. If you could go back in time and speak to yourself within the first three years of your DJ career, what advice would you give yourself and why? So this is for new DJs listening. What should they focus on or not focus on to become successful? Dude, let's go. Happy to be <laughs> let's, go. Yeah, yeah. let's go. Let's go. Yeah, guys. Um, coming up in the DJ game, I think one of the biggest things that I wish I knew early on was to find the right resources on where to sharpen my skills mm. um, as a DJ. And I think a lot of that comes from, you know, you don't know too many people in the in the industry early on, but it's all about going out, introducing yourself to other DJs, especially the older ones in the game too. I think that's super, super important. I've been super blessed and have had like really great mentors throughout my years DJing. And uh, they've been so selfless, like help me teach all these like different skills, whether it be uh, producing my own edits, um, cutting, like scratching, all that stuff, um, and really like helping me expand my library. I think that's a big one too. Um, you just got to know where to go out and find uh, these guys, you know? We, we hear so much about networking, and I think that's like a big buzzword in the industry. And I think that can be for promoters, that can be even for bottle girls and bartenders, you know, getting the foot in the door. For DJing, um, what is like the best way for a young DJ to maybe I think the obvious example is young DJ going up to the approaching older DJ. Is there a way to do it? Do it? You know, obviously social media has kind of made things easier than I think pre-social media, right? Um, can either you guys talk about you know what's the best way to approach maybe an older DJ? All egos aside, mm -hmm. approach. You know, you're you're here to learn. Um, obviously, choose the right person to go to. Uh, do your research. Sorry to interrupt you. Choosing the right person is like actually a very very important point yeah um what i'm realizing i know you're realizing this too is like there are djs i'm when the dj that i was when i was within my first year three years um is not the same dj that i am now style wise what i wanted to play what i thought i was supposed to play and even just the shift in time and what's been popular has changed so again choosing the right person yeah. to if you're looking for mentorship or if you're looking for maybe a booking let me open for you if you're a house dj probably shouldn't be hitting up the trap dj no you know right. what i'm saying right and any other kind of combination like that so i think that's a very very good point fingers oh, unless you know you want to broaden like you know your 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 horizons for you know what you play sure. and experiences like that if you want to be an open format dj you want to yeah. be able to do everything else and you know that you're weak in certain points it's cool to network with other people yeah. that can you know so so in that case what i'm saying is the opposite, the opposite. you know so then that yeah. is the perfect person yeah, that, yeah right so you know, it's it's knowing what you want to do 
with your time, you mm-hmm. know, because, you know, uh, one huge thing for me that I should have told myself was to reinvest in myself earlier. Uh, a lot of the times, uh, you know, when you're young, it's like, yo, you, it's it's a lot of clout. A lot of mm-hmm. people are giving you attention. Um, so the money comes in and out, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's just like that was one thing for uh, for us when we came up. Um, that's kind of one of the reasons why I created JJP was because we wanted to create a younger generation of DJs. Um, and we are really were getting respect from the older guys like the Hectics, the Danny S's, the Sticks was was our door was actually our door with sticks yeah and that's a great person to learn from um he, he loves those. helping yeah newer djs he loves it he loves it because he knows too it's just like it's it's there is it also puts on years on yourself as well because you know you if you have the right mentality you have the right ear to, to, to catch the next snacks or the next cami v mm. you know you know that they can like you know help you out when they get on yeah. You know, so so it's it, it one hand washes the other. So yeah. definitely yeah. reinvesting in yourself, um, equipment, stuff like that. Like don't just you know have the money come in. Have a plan. Mm. You know what I'm saying. So yep. that's what my first five years. I wish I, I had a plan. I was just I just loved music. Yeah, and I was just going with the vibe. So that's so one thing so. I would do. So for you specifically, I think it would just, again, help people kind of put, you know, what does that plan mean? So for you, Fingers, to go back to, you know, the first five years, Fingers, what would that plan be for yourself? My plan was, uh, would be, because I was, you know, I do a lot, I, I produce and stuff like that. Um, and I did that first. Like, I was an artist first. Mm. The, the reason why I started, be, I wanted to be a DJ was because I wanted to cut the middleman and I wanted play to play your own shit. music. So that's why I was like, yo, let me just become a DJ. My uncle was a DJ. I'm a very visual learner, so I learned off him. And then I was just like picking it up off of there. But I would uh, I would tell myself to be a little bit more organized in my plans and where I want to go. Sit down with yourself and actually write down what are your goals, what you want to do. It's not just I want to go DJ in the clubs. I want to be the guy on the flyer. It's where do you want to go with it? Because then you'll find yourself, you know, five years in the game. Like, damn, you don't want to find yourself five years in the game wasting all that time and having yep. to figure it out yep. and, and you're stuck in the same spot exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. i yeah. think i going right off that point there i think especially like say five years ago i felt like i was probably like a, a big fish in a small pond and the biggest thing you just got to go out different markets um network go reach out to uh, different djs on social media see where they're playing at night hey uh i'm so-and-so like really fuck with your shit i would love to come check you out like where are you playing this weekend Mm -hmm. pull up on them show them some love and then you know just be like yeah like i'll send you a mix of mine like maybe you can put me on with you wherever you think fit and then go from there yeah Yeah, it's i think this applies in especially djing like and and this is something i try to try and do like they say that you you should never be the smartest person in any room you shouldn't be the richest person in any room then you're in the wrong room right Mm. um and i think that can be very applicable to the clubs you know if if i'm just go, if i'm just going well what if i'm still in, to this to this day not going out and even at least listening to other mixes like live sets of dudes that i know are bigger than me or playing bigger mar- markets than me or when i go to miami i'm taking a night off to just go and listen mm-hmm. if i'm in vegas i take a night off to go let these part these dope ass parties they have that i've heard so much about i need to see it yeah. and feel it you know what i'm saying so and never. that never really ends. Yeah, never you know, like you, you are never a perfect DJ. You're like you're always. never you. There, like when it's something creative, when it's an art form, you're, there's no ceiling. Right, right. There, yeah. there can be ceiling, like financial ceilings or like opportunity ceilings. But as far as like skill, it never ends. You exactly. can always be better, and you can always be inspired by different things yes. that you never you never know yes. where you're gonna get inspiration from yes, something. So. Absolutely. You mentioned something, Cami, um, on on resources, and, and you kind of went um, kind of uh, in a in an intangible route with that. Mm-hmm. There's also resources. This is something that I'm um, actually uses. Uh, got a question from one of the guest listeners. Uh, was um, you know where do what are like tools? Whether it's like fi- you know you can put money into. Um, or like where we get our music DJs and stuff. I know that when I was early in the game I was just doing YouTube rips and not really knowing where to find music and stuff. What are some uh, resources there? Dude get on a record pool. That's the first thing first thing get on a record pool whether it be club killers DJ city heavy hitters. There's a hundred of them out there DMS Mm -hmm. like there's a hundred out there Get on a record pool get your library organized come up with a system Whatever works best for you. Every DJ is a little bit different. Yeah, but and I think that's the biggest thing too. like if you spend the time to get really organized with your music, 
and know it inside and out, then that helps with the cleanliness of your transitions, the cleanliness throughout your sets, throughout your night, and the speed can also increase yep. as well. Yep. Even myself, I catch myself because I'm always downloading. I download almost every day. Like, I, I'll just go on and just see what's going on or whatever. Yeah. Or I'll wait a, a few days or then I'll just start downloading yeah. and I catch myself like, oh, sh- oh shit, like, I got I to gotta organize again. You know, mm-hmm. and, and that's in my library is huge. Yeah. So it's that that's something that never stops as well. Yep. Yeah. Always got to keep doing that, and um, it also depends on where you're at. Know know um, what, what your surroundings are, who you're DJing for, and then like I tell people all the time, don't just download what you're comfortable with. Mm. You know yeah. What I'm yeah. Mm. Expand your expand your library so you know when you're in certain situations that people can be there like, yo, I want this song. You'll be able to have yeah. something around right. that yeah. that realm. And now yeah. they have that you can link up like streaming to your mm-hmm. Serato, mm-hmm. Uh, to your Scratch Live and be able to um, find a song right then and there. So there's really no excuse. Like right now, like back in the day, it was kind of a little harder. Yeah, um, it, was to, phys- it was more physical. It was more like yeah. Yeah. you had to have it or you didn't. And that, and, and at that point, it's like yo, like a lot of DJs were really like you know, s- you know, hold on to their music. They didn't want right. really to share. Yeah, because hard to yeah. do certain things. Like I, I, I came up in the game around like LimeWire, YouTube, doing stuff like that, or you know, um, even like sometimes like you get get dirty and you steal some uh, DJ CDs. Yeah, I've have, I've had DJs come to my to my gigs and I turn around real quick or I go get a drink and come back and I have CDs missing. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. That's wild. I'm so glad I did not DJ in the, in the <laughs> CD era, bro. Yeah, dude. I am like very glad. I, I, I like it. I like. I'm glad I did. I like. I, I was right there because it, it really taught me how to re- how to blend. Yeah. So Big Tune sells me this a lot. Um, Big Tune said he was impressed with me the first time he heard me because when I actually he is he's a big headphone freak. I mean I am too. Um, but he was like, you were one of the only dudes in your generation that like really focused on headphones. But that was because I came up with USBs, mm. Mm. which isn't which is just a it's, step away from the CDs. Right. So like when you know for for you know getting DJs if you don't know you know uh, I came up on Recordbox. So filling up a USB with a bunch of music, a bunch of different crates, and but if, when you're on record box, when you're DJing directly on the CDJs, you don't, you can't, you can't have Serato face because there's no Serato. Yeah. So I'm not staring at waveforms and trying to match my bits all by, all by ear. ear baby. Yeah. So I had, and to what to your point, I'm glad I had that base because now I still, it's still, it's just because it's just what I know. It made yeah. you a better yeah, DJ. Yeah, it made me a better DJ in the yeah. long run. And I tell a lot of young dudes that I'm like mentoring these days, where I'm like, mm. yo, please. Because like and 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 uh, Daniel Danny Costa told told me this too when it came to like learning new cuts he was like learn it on both hands from jump because you don't know it yet mm. so because you don't know it you you can't how did he word it he was he was like since you don't you haven't learned the scratch yet yeah if just start learning from both hands because your right hand is just as weak as your left at that point exactly so if 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 you're if you don't if you, a lot of these controller DJs these new age DJs like they get the Serato face and they don't even use headphones because they can just stare at their computer but then they have weak ass ears yeah you can't you can't you don't know if like I could hear if, if a blend is off I know which way I need to turn it exactly you see what I'm saying just because yeah. I understand how the beats are are, yep. are fucked up yeah or, or the snares and then the you know, train, train, wreck, yeah. train wreck mixes and they'll let it fly yeah, yeah. Like, yikes yeah <laughs> and, and so like things like that like I, I'll hear like DJs who are train wrecking and they're just, yeah and they're letting it fly and I'm like yo why don't you have headphones you could have yeah. fixed this yeah, yeah. Easy. you know what I'm saying like, you, like you're you're letting the crowd hear what I'm hearing and what I'm hearing isn't good but you could have fixed this there's a whole it part ba- of this it mixer baffles me bro. that like, lets you fix it you why don't saying? you use your headphones it baffles <laughs> yeah, me. yeah like every DJ that I've seen even my guys that have been in the game for a while and they're comfortable with it I'm like why I like even me like I'm comfortable but I'm not that comfortable yeah I still like I still have like the butterflies when I go DJ. I'm like I don't want to fuck up, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's just it's been there so long. So that and like the instant doubles and the just using yeah. one side, I, like yeah. it still gets me. Like and I've seen that I've seen that transition. I know that started like when uh, back in the day CDJs were expensive. You know, for, dude, they're for still young, they're, they're still, they're still are, pretty. But fucking for expensive. a young DJ coming up, you yeah. want you want the CDJs. Everyone's using CDJs, right. so a lot of the DJs used to we used to get them once at a time. So that's when we started using the instant doubles. In- internal was mode. because of that. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. That's yeah, fair. Definitely. You know, and then I I, I kind of seen it turn to where it just became like a thing, like well well. So you're talking about out of necessity. Yeah. But there's dudes who get a full ass controller and srt 
and then are using one side, and, then, and, and that's where I feel like that thing, like it started from that, and then kids, kids that were coming up used to see that, and then they just started doing it. Well, and and then if you're a righty, you know, you're like, okay, I'm a right hand DJ. I'm I'm going to learn everything on, on my yeah. right hand. <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I, like I said, I tell a lot of my young DJs, I'm like, yo, please start learning your left hand. I know you don't want. I know it's gonna. You're gonna think of it as a waste of time, but there's gonna be the day. Where you need it yeah. and you don't have it. Mm-hmm. And that day happened this past weekend for one of my young bulls. I'm not gonna name it, I'm not gonna have any names. I don't wanna embarrass him. But he, I know he's listening and I know he knows I'm gonna bring this up. He had his first headlining gig this weekend. Yeah. I happened to be there to show love. And he's someone I've been on his ass for the last entire year. I know. Learn your left hand. Stop staring at the screen. Use your headphones because one day you're gonna need it. And this voice is going to play in your head <laughs> and you're going to be like, I should have listened to Uncle Snacks. Yeah. I'm there showing love, catching a drink, whatever, with some other homies. He texts me, he goes, yo, come in the booth. I'm like, oh, shit. I, I was like, I already know some yeah. shit's going on. Mm. I get in there. The right side's not working. Mm. And I said, so? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I can't. He goes, I can't. He goes, he goes, bro, like, I need, he's like, I need the right sided DJ. And I'm like, eh, what a, you have a whole other hand. Yeah. Adapt and overcome. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Obviously, we went and fixed it. What ended up happening was the, uh, no, the CDJ. So this is what, <laughs> shout out my Night Ride guys, man. I love my Night Ride guys. Yeah, they're, um, they're, they're so they're there trying to, tr- we're all there trying to trouble. So I'm going, to, so first, you know, I'm going through Serato time code. I'm going through, li- I turned it on and off, whatever. I'm like, you keep DJing internal. Just, just live with your left hand for the next few minutes like uh, while we troubleshoot this. And I'm, you know how it is. Like we go through all the shit that we've, been truly troubleshooting for years you know what i'm saying so i'm going through my normal list of things i check yep. you know what i'm saying yep. and i'm like and and like when i go in the settings like the that green circle is just not even appearing so i'm like there's no signal and i'm like interesting and i and i'm like and i look at uh danny night right shout out danny night right man shout out danny I, I look at him and i'm like there's no way they didn't plug it in you know i'm like so i look i'm like nah, nah that's not it that's also i'm still troubleshooting and mind you there's um this venue does a four DJ, a four CDJ setup. Yep. So I was like, okay, there's another CDJ here. Let's just start switching it. So that's when I look to unplug it. It's not it's even not plugged, plugged in. in. The RCA yeah. is not even plugged in. Jeez. And I look at and I look at Danny and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I go, am I gonna take your job? <laughs> and perfect, perfect point. Another point for the DJs coming up. No, no, know how to, yeah, know how to troubleshoot. Yeah, know how to yes. troubleshoot. Yes. Because I was at Hava mm. and I was having a problem with the because it was a lot of vibration. I was having a problem with the USB, so with the um, RCA, so they kept popping out. Mm. So while I was mixing, I was still running that. And I was doing. I was like yeah. doing that, and, and I was like, "Yo, grab, uh, grab something to put under it." Yeah, put mm. under yeah, it, help yeah. it out. When, when you can, and, and that's the thing. There's gonna be like, all, we we only you only figured that out, and I only figured this stuff out because we hit walls where we're like, I don't know what to yes. do. Yeah, and, there's nothing. And we Google it and whatever, or or you know, we have our group chats. We're like, yo, this is Dude, going on. Hundred percent. But you learn. It's there's nothing. Anything. There's nothing worse than being uncomfortable. Yes. In front of five hundred, um, yes. six hundred people. Yes. In the middle of your set. Yeah. And whether that be a technological issue. Yeah. Whether that be a music a library issue yep. and you start sweating it out and you're like yeah. oh man i don't know if i have even more of this in my in my yeah. bag you know yeah it's all about what you do in that moment and what you do yes. later on that night like i can the the best yes. thing for a younger dj is to get uncomfortable early on yes. in your career yes because that and it that's half of it it's all what you do after because it's like okay hey i really need to improve this bag i'm going home i'm yeah. gonna do my homework yeah i'm gonna get i'm gonna get comfortable yeah I'm gonna get yeah. comfortable, and, but but the hard work thing is so important, and and I yeah. think that is something that is being lost. Um, again, uh, I'm not anti controller because means is such a big thing, right? If you it, a, a CDJ and S9 setup is probably like six k. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know, if if I told my mom I was gonna spend six six k on some shit that I didn't know was gonna go right, <laughs> yeah, she would have liked it. You know what I mean? And I started with a two hundred dollar controller. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it's good, but got to start somewhere but, for sure. But then there was a point where I was like, I need these, like all these big dudes using CDJs. Like I need a pair. I need to get it, my hands on. Or some at CDJs. least learn, yeah, how to to do that. Because when you get to when you get in these clubs, like, uh, I had somebody say, "Yo, I'm gonna bring my controller." No, 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 like, dude, stop. Nah, no, stop you're not bringing the your house controller. setup is a six thousand dollar house setup. We're not moving shit. If you don't know how to do it, you're not ready. You're not ready. Don't Agreed. get mad at me because you're not ready. If you're 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 you're, 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 you're hitting home runs and 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 
uh, college baseball because you're using uh, an aluminum bat and you can't hit a home run with a wooden bat in the majors. You're not ready for the majors. You don't have yeah. the power yet. I love that. So get in the gym, get big, and start swinging with the wooden bat. It's different with yeah. the wooden bat. You can't you can't be a good DJ if you don't know how to DJ on all equipment. No. Yeah. You have to, you have to, or at least know how to necessity. maneuver around and somehow find the familiar yeah. things that you need to do to be able to mix. Like right. we can go backwards. I can yeah. get on a SB yeah. and still rock. But if yeah. I only know an SB and I can't go on, you know, the yeah. older, the, the bigger gen, whatever. But that comes down know? to, again, that comes down to making those connections. If you don't have the means, figure find out the, someone yeah, who does. Find someone who does. Yeah. And uh, there have been numbers, like countless numbers of times of like where I've gone to other older DJs and learn how to spin on vinyl. Yeah. I, I, that's huge Dude, too. Like, like I said, like uh, again, with my, with the JJP crew, one of the first lessons that we would teach the younger guys coming up. Um, and we weren't that older than you. We were like, maybe like two years older than you, but you had no idea what you were doing. Yeah. Set this up. Yeah. Set it up. Yep. We, we, I used to, we I used to go mess to, up the cables. Fix yeah, it. Yeah, fix I used to go to Cammy's house yep. before I got my turntables. And I was like, yo, like like let's let's get a session let's in. Like let, let me let me touch some vinyl. And like he saw me uncomfortable. Yeah. And I was like, Oh yeah, this is different. I'm like, Oh yeah, but I like it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like let's 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 session, bro. And like and then and then I was like, Okay, I'm comfortable enough. I need I need my pair. And yep. then I got my pair and I'm fucking nasty. Never be <laughs> <laughs> never be complacent. You know? Never be complacent. And he's younger place. than me. Yeah. And at the time was like you know, we were at different places in our, and I was, and I went up to him. I was like, "Let yeah. me go to your crib. You teach me this." Yeah, you know, you're like, my brother. I love you. Yeah, I'll have you yeah. over anytime. Yeah, dude. And, 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 and now when we session, it's, it's crazy. You yeah. know, it's vibes. 100%. Um, so I think, um, yeah, young DJ. I mean, there's just so much, and I know that you're gonna get excited. You know, you want to see your name in lights. You want to see yourself on the big flyer. But like, it, it it's not us trying to trying to little bro you but yeah. it re there's really so much that you have to see and go through before you reach it like they're really like it, we're not trying to make us sound like fucking i don't even know but like no like, it's, it's just and that's why i said all <laughs> egos aside it's like yeah we're, we're not trying to sun you we're trying to we yeah. want to see you excel and if if that was the case we, we would not be wasting our busy time schedule to to sit here and yeah. and, 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 and talk things. about this facts, because we facts. want the next generation facts. to be able to excel and push forward and push the culture forward Dude, and you're not going to know how to push the culture forward if you don't know where it came from yeah. you don't know how to how, you know the, the 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 means of that so when you get into that point where you're online talking all this confident stuff you get into a into a situation like like your young boy had and you're like blue in the face everyone's looking at you mm -hmm. she you're the center of attention Shit yeah. and bricks Okay yeah. Yeah. And that's when You're battle tested Yeah Yeah and, and and this goes into Other things too When um You know You can be Big man at whatever Resident spot you have Whether it's small or whatever And you'll be like Yo I'm a great DJ I rock this shit every week Whatever In my opinion What makes a really good DJ Is let me give you A 20 person crowd mm -hmm. Yeah Can you rock that yep. Yeah That's what's That's that's to me What, what differentiate Yo Give me Give me Give me Hakkasan Sold out, bottle CO2. Every, I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna like. It's not that hard to yeah, uh, just play. Going, it, just, like, it's, yeah. like, if, if even if they might be like, oh, the DJs are right, but I'm gonna fucking hug us on in Vegas, and you know, like whatever. And that's why you hear a lot of like, I go places and they're like, yo, you, you're nasty. Like, why aren't you? Why aren't you here? Like the DJs usually suck here, and it's a big spot. <laughs> yeah, but, you, but the lights, the atmosphere, right, everything. Yeah. You're not. You don't really. You're look, not really paying attention to it. Like, let the, let me music. let me give you a half sold bar in the middle of, of fucking western mass keep the whole crowd there and make the bar money yes yep that's i'd be okay yeah they're nasty yeah they got yeah. a library they know how to pace they know how to read crowds that's a good dj yeah, yeah. just because you rock whatever whatever every week like i'm not i'm not yeah. into it 100%. And, and also don't don't shy away don't think opening up is is you're less of a dj open up do that that's your chance to feel out the to feel out the crowd you know um you know to, to practice to test things out yep you know what i'm saying like that's why i love opening up i hate like i i barely get openers because i like to start i like mm -hmm. to build up my night same yeah. i like to, to to create that roller coaster ride yep. yeah you know what i'm saying so i'm back at venue for the first time in, on saturday for in a while in a few months and i'm like yo give me give me all four hours bro I'm yeah just, i can't man. wait i love that can't wait yeah but we've we've said this on the show before a really good dj knows how to open and knows the right records to play yeah you know, and the headline DJ, obviously there's a significant amount of skill that goes into that. But it, at the end of the day, if you have the big records 
like it, it's easier to play those big records than than to open. I just don't understand how you can play the biggest record of this year at at eleven. I just I just really <laughs> it, it just makes no sense to me. Like like but that's the thing. Like what I can I can watch openers and be like yo. You don't. I'm realizing that your bag is not that deep. The fact that you have to rely on this for a reaction. Yep. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, and 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 there are people, you know, patrons that like they don't know any better. So they're like, oh my god, they're playing this sick record. Like, right. They're so, so good. So, so I want let me my know. song at that point in time. Like Bad Bunny, right away, straight away, play that hot shit. But, right but, now. The, but crazy. The, but the thing is, you you could drop his whole new album, and that's great. And people are gonna be like, oh, this dude's hot because he's playing all the hot yeah. shit. Yeah. No. Yeah. Bad Bunny has three, four other albums. Right. Yeah. So let me should be playing. Let me ask you a question. When I first opened for you. Yeah. You didn't know I was so horny. You didn't. Oh my god! You you didn't even know who I was. No, nope. really, right? Nope. We never met before. I, you were a referral. Yep. I had no idea who who he was. Yep. That's awesome. What, yeah. So I opened for you. You it pulled. A story, it was a Storyville. Storyville on uh, a Friday. Was it a Friday? Yep. For, no Saturday. No. Ooh, Friday, 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 Friday. Yeah. It was on a Friday. You pulled up early. Yeah. I didn't know you were there. Yeah. I did my thing. What? What drew me to you to have the dude, relationship that we have now? Dude, oh my God. This is such a good story. This is a story of how me and Cammy like met and then became friends. And oh all my that. God. So, so I needed an opener because I was getting dinner with some friends. Like it was like a birth. I don't know. It was something. Where like I needed an opener. I wasn't going to make it on time. And at first I hit up like Eli, who was still DJing at the time, Matt, uh, like my young bulls. I was just like, yo, like who's free? Open Storyville. And like all of them were busy booked. I don't know hooking up with each other i don't really know <laughs> but they couldn't make it for whatever reason and i was like oh, okay fuck and eli was like yo this dude cammy we know and he's nice like you should get him and i'm like all right fuck it um and that's when i think i hit you up or i, or I think i was like eli like giving my contact or telling him i'm looking for him or whatever yeah like i really did not know this dude and uh that's a gamble it was it was it was um but like i said i needed one it wasn't like yeah. oh i'm just being lazy and i don't want to open it was like i needed one yeah so yeah, we put him on. Like, cool, whatever. I like. I probably give you, like said two sentences to you before the night. Like, I was probably just like, "Hey, thanks so much for covering this. Like, do your thing. This is what it is. Hip hop, but whatever." And then, yeah, I get in earlier than I expected. I was with my homie that I came from dinner with, and like we were just at the bar. And then, like, and I was just listening, and like, it was a perfect opening. Like, I was just. I remember just being like, "Yo, what the fuck?" And then, to the point where I went up to him and I was just like, "Hey," and I think you were shocked because he wasn't expecting me at that time. I didn't know you were there. Like, I let him ride for like twenty minutes, and I was just. And there was a point where I was like, "I need to like talk to him," and like, and I was just like, "Bro, like," I, so I, I remember one of the things I said was like, "The places you're playing at, you should not be playing at." I was like, "You're way too good for them," and I was like, "Listen to me, I'm gonna bring you on this ride because mm -hmm. I, because I like, I was like, I heard enough, I heard enough. Like, you have the potential, you got it." And then from there, it was like opening Storyville multiple times. Had him DJ my birthday at Tunnel. Awesome. Like had him had him open for me at Bijou. Like you know, I was just like, yo, like I believe you deserve to be at these places. And then once you do, just keep doing your thing. And the, and and this is literally, guys, early young DJ. This is the fucking journey. Open, open, puts his head down, doesn't complain, whatever, whatever. And then there's a point where like he kills Star Skillin' Spot, and they're like, yo, headline. And like, oh, no, oh, I've seen this dude around. Like, even Ada was like, oh, I've like, I'm seeing this dude around. Like, yeah. he's good. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And then like, we're session, we're having sessions and shit. And then um, there's just a point where I'm like, okay, like you, you're good now. You're they free know, now. They know yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Do do what you do. And then and now here he is, like fucking crushing shit. And like, shout out to you again you. <laughs> for not having an ego, because there's people I know you've been in situations where you've out DJed certain dudes that they think that they're yeah. super headliners, and instead of praising you and building a relationship, like, yo, chill, 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 the guy that did that for me was Hectic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Sticks introduced me to Hectic, and I, you know, I would open up for him, and and um, in these nights, and and it got to a point where like, Yo, dude, you need to close. Yeah. Get up there and close. So and the, and the guys, that's not the journey, but that's, I I would say like not the common one, but like that's the most. I I think I think if you want, yeah, the path most traveled. Thank you. Like I think when to get your reps. Like I said, he was getting reps. Yeah. And yep. like learning, okay, these are now bigger spots. Oh, now I gotta work on bottles. What does that mean? Like, yeah. what does that look like? What time does this happen? You know what I'm saying? Like the mic work. Mic work, the developing libraries. that library. Yeah. And then like I said, there was a point where I was like, fuck, like he he's ready. Yeah. Like, and then there's people that want to skip that whole journey. That was like what, a, a year, two year journey? Yeah, it was like a year journey, yeah. You yep. know? Yep. Like this shit doesn't happen overnight, bro. No. Yeah, like, and, that, no. and those are the ones that uh 
you hear so much, they talk so much shit, and then you go hear them spin, and then you're sitting there looking at them, looking at them like, yo, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are the ones that 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 skip that that shit, and I'm just mm-hmm. like. And I'm straight up with dudes, man. And they ask me, yo, how do I do? And be like, yo, dude, you need work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need work. And that's why a lot of people, like, I have people that, like, kind of, like, you know, they fuck with me, but they don't fuck with me because I'm I'm too blunt. Yeah. But w- wouldn't you want somebody to be blunt with you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all you go shit. And, and that's the thing, like, but sometimes, like I said, like, you came from the Springfield bars, right? Yeah. That's where you went to school. Yep. Right? And you were the man out there, I'm sure. Shout out, Patties. Well, you know what I mean? You were the yeah. man out there. Yeah. So when he when so if he's gonna come and be like yo I was the man out here I'm gonna be the man here mm. you know so if, if there's a snacks that's like bro like thank you for doing this for me but like yo I'm I don't know if you were the man over there but like this this shit ain't working yeah. and if he caught a, a like a bad taste for that and then was like yo I'm not gonna fuck with snacks who knows where we would he we definitely would have been sitting, be sitting across at this table country, right yeah. now yeah. Yeah. yeah you see what I'm saying so it goes yeah. both ways yeah. Yeah. you know um so again like I think. Um, it's actually a perfect segue to the next uh, topic in terms of like just journeys and then mm-hmm. and then avenues. So, club D, we're, we're all three of us are club DJs, but we also do different kinds of DJing, different types of events. Um, and there's different avenues that you can take on a DJ career. There's corporate, there's clubs. People only do colleges. People do weddings. Only do weddings. Radio. There's all these different avenues of DJing. Yep. And sometimes you try one and you realize maybe that's not your bag, but you're really good at this other thing for whatever reason. You know, I would love for you guys to kind of just talk about again with your own experiences and doing other avenues and kind of going back and forth. Just give me your experience, whether it be financial, you know, it's better this way and that way. How much more work, how much more time does the other one, other avenues um, kind of what take from you? Yeah. Kind of elaborate on that. Yeah, I think, I mean, there's some some avenues are a little more expensive than others, especially more of the private ones where you need to buy all of your own gear, whether that be like corporate functions or weddings and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I mean, it depends what your personal goals are. Um, are you in it to have fun? Are you in it to meet people? Are you in it because you love music? Are you in it to make money? You know, you got to spend money to make money sometimes. So definitely the more like financial rewarding route would be going like through the corporate stuff. But also, if like you really appreciate the grind and um, like the nightlife scene, then definitely go into like the the bars and the clubs and surrounding yourself with those people in that in those in those uh, rooms. You good? Sorry, I'm fucking cracking my <laughs> neck, and I'm like, Jesus, Christ. I need some turmeric. Why are you smirking? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, sorry, sorry um, to try to crack my no, neck. And no, I'm you're like, God good. I was I was concerned. I didn't know what was going on over there. <laughs> I'm, um, good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm um, good. Th- feeling it. But but surrounding yourself with those people in in those the places where you want to be is is crucial. Is crucial to get there. Yeah, fingers. Yeah, man. Um, I I feel like whether you're you're coming from uh, a private event kind of you know way or it all ties into each other they all prep you for for everything like doing the private events prep me to be a better open open format dj yeah Mm -hmm. oh my Mm -hmm. weddings has opened my bag like crazy being able to go from genre to genre seamlessly is an art oh yeah because you can fuck up you can fuck that up real quick oh yeah yeah Yeah. you're not making not make sense yeah right um I feel like um, I feel like all DJs should tap into the private event um, space, even if you're going with somebody and you're tagging along. Um, and then again, I tell you, with, with each gig, put some money aside mm-hmm. to buy some equipment because before before you know it, you yeah. know you have enough money to get your own speakers. It only takes two speakers. If you want to sub at that, maybe some spe- more speakers have built-in subs where it's gonna sound good, and you get a, and you get your your laptop. Which you probably already have, and a controller, which you probably already have. It's and your not microphone. that hard. And your microphone. It's yeah. not that hard. You want to get some lights and stuff, that's fine. I mean, there's levels to that. There's levels to that. Because then you start doing, you being premiere all in one, one yeah. man, band man type dude. And there's guys who make mad money off of that shit. Yeah, you know dude. What I mean? They have the the bare minimum. I mean, mm-hmm. I know me, I was doing a lot, I was doing a lot of private events. And me, I'm K Verding, I'm doing quinceañeras. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That helped me with my life. Yeah. Yep. That's why I can do all that, and that's was yeah. being able to DJ those private events. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd say like those are definitely key. Don't don't shy away from that. You know, if you have a chance to do that, do it. Um, it also teaches you how to be a maestro. 
Yeah. MC, yeah. MCing, you yeah. know, controlling your vocals, controlling, you know, what you say, how you speak, pronouncing, right. not holding the mic like this. That don't do this. I don't like it. Don't I, do it. Do you sound like ass. Yeah. Don't I do, do it. That. I do it sometimes. You, you get that rapper hands, and it happens. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, it happens. Yeah, yeah. You know, but you know how to project. Weddings, weddings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, know how to project. I, I, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. some people that don't know. No, how to no. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Weddings, that's true. weddings really help with my MCing, and that's yeah. one bag that I really struggled with before getting to like into the club scene. Like weddings was huge for me, and just yeah. having the confidence to be up there and say clearly what I had to say. Yeah, bro, know. my library is crazy because of weddings. I actually bro. saw one of your uh, posts of the wedding you did recently, and I'm like, oh, wow, he he tapped into that bag. I'm like, wow, oh, you like saw what like yeah, I was actually playing, yeah, 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 yeah bro. Yeah, dude, like, he tapped into that bag. I was like, oh, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, that's bro. what's up. Bro, because like, you, I got no it, surprised. Bro. I was surprised. Bro. I know you. You know, I know yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But your that, library, but was, but it, bro. No, because I'm gonna be real. I do a lot of white people weddings. Yeah, no, shout out my white people, and. And yeah, like, I mean, just like any demographic, any, you know, whatever, like there's, there's the Blanco anthems. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That gotta like, you gotta it. know them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and I'm, oh, I'm not, I'm, research game is crazy. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And remember I was talking to you guys, I was like, like, uh, came in to me do uh, a lot of weddings. Yep. Um, and, and I asked him, I was like, yo, like, what's your first song? Yeah. From, from like format after formalities and dinner to like get them on. Like, I was like, are they the same as, because I had my answer. But I was curious if it was like something and, and, and their answers actually intrigued me and then I tried them and it was great. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like dude, it oh my and it, even just like dinner. Like yeah. just like quick quick shout out Maritage Entertainment, by the <laughs> yeah. way. Yeah, so um it's, and but but I, what I want to talk about it, you know, different. So you know, I do I do um I work with a a company as well, Jogging the Box Entertainment. Shout out shout out Jogging the Box if you need any wedding needs, hit us up. Uh Instagram email. Um Plug. <laughs> So, so 30 years in the game, Todd Powers runs it, right? So he's like my boss. And he makes these jokes. I mean, it's true. I'm a little... <sighs> Diva is a strong word. But when I'm slinging... Boy. When I'm... When I'm well, but, no, when I, but when I'm slinging speakers and like wiring shit, like there are points where I'm like, bro, man. It's a grind, dude. Weddings are... Uh, shout out my wedding DJs, man. It's a crazy... And, and I'll see him or like some of the other like vets and like they're fucking like Boy Scouts, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like they got a they got a spare wire for everything, different like like, and I'm like, yo, I don't. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, get me back to Boston where I can do these clubs. Like I don't want to do this shit. And they and they tease me. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah. like they're like, yeah, you're talented, but like, bro, like, I'm sure you. You're, I'm just used to yeah. walking in, plugging mm -hmm. in my shit, it's and doing my thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So I mean, I do appreciate again every time that I'm like, okay, like this is work. Like yeah. it is a lot of work, and and we're here to make someone else happy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Again, these are little things that. But once you start putting in your bag and your mental bag, yeah, like it goes a long, long way. You my know what my first year doing weddings, and it's kind of circling back to the point I made earlier. Like when you get uncomfortable, you yeah. know, it, it helps you become a better DJ. Yeah. Um. And I sat there and I was like, at the end of every wedding, I was like, how could that gone smoother? What did I really need? Yeah. Like to get like yep. equipment wise, right? Yep. And then I go and make a checklist. Boom, Amazon next For day. For me, it's, it's there. song wise. So, right, so, like, yep, like that's like, part like, of it for I'm, sure. I'm like, what were people requesting today? Right, and, and, you know, so so we have, I mean, sh again, talking in the box, they supply me with stuff where I, I can like look up stuff, whether it's my phone or another computer. Yep. Um. So like, usually I can get it, but I'm like, oh shit, like so people request, like I'm like, there's some white people shit I don't know or whatever, you yeah. know, and I'm like, yep. wow, like this is crazy. I get it now. Now I can play it all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, why do I got fucking eight versions of the Fulu song? Because all these white people love it, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. and then now, like, I have that bag, like, yeah. out of not nowhere, but like, you know, now, like, when it comes to like battles and stuff, Dude, or, like, battles you just have these bags, now. or now when you're opening and there's only 20 people in the room. Then you can start pulling from bags and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, and that's what, dude. I feel like weddings too really helps with like opening yeah. sets. I think that's yeah, that's super, huge. bro. Yeah. Super. But but even to like go against, like again, I shout out my wedding DJs. Like it's, it's also like getting funky on Facebook where like all these wedding DJs like start making fun of club DJs, and I'm like, yo, y'all tried to be club DJs at one point too, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everyone has their avenue, which again is the point of the to of the topic. Um, so DJs Facebook. listening find your avenue there's not one like i feel like the club stuff is glamorized but one you can make way more money there's a reason yeah we do, we do both. private yeah. events we there's, do a both. Re there's a reason we do both because yeah. you know i'm you know i'm young i still want i still like being um you know around like the people that i'm around and like going out and like you know getting drinks and like partying and shit being around girls like that's what i like right now for the time being mm -hmm. 
but I also like money and that's why I'm also doing weddings. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Don't, don't get complacent. You know, I think that's the biggest thing too. Cause you could get stuck in one Avenue and you really want to expand to another one. And now you've been, you, you've been labeled as a certain type of DJ. Mm. And I think that's huge. If you want to be able to do all different types of events, start early, meet all those people and, and don't get complacent. Absolutely. And for me, I feel like if you know your music, weddings are super easy. Why? Because you're literally DJing for two hours. At that, Bro. maybe an hour and a half. Bro, there's some we- there's some weddings where like they want every formality in the world, and I'm like, yo, keep going, keep going. I'm, I'm, do like, thing. I'm like, cause I'm, I'm, oh, 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 uh, reception is an hour and a half. <laughs> no problem. I'm like, Boop. Yeah. Ripping, yeah. ripping, yeah. yeah, ripping, and then yeah. everyone fucking the bride is like hunching over. She's like, I'm tired. I've never part. I haven't partied in five years. <laughs> yeah, she's like, Oh my god, this is great. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh yeah, and then, you're, and then you just have so much music to pull from. The, when the hardest part for I think feel like the club guys, or at least for me, let me speak for myself. The hardest part for me for weddings is all like the the, the formalities. Yeah, when I'm when I'm doing the making sure I got mom's mom's name right and the fucking. Ugly maid of honors last name, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like all that shit is what's stressful to me. And then yeah. once all that's yeah. done, dude, like once it's dinner, sigh of relief, sigh of relief. like once the last bouquet toss or whatever, and it's just yeah. part. Of, I'm like, okay, this is my where 100%. I shine. Yeah, exactly. You know but exactly. again, be uncomfortable. You know that it, it helps with my organizational skills, and and like I think I have great MC work, but it, like that shit that has even made it better. Like you said, it will never be a hundred. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Always make it. There's always going to be situations that can make it better. Keep working, keep working, go, mm-hmm. go watch other DJs, even other wedding DJs too. I mean, our company is great where, you know, uh, the owner, James, who's an unbelievable DJ, unbelievable MC, and he's been doing it for so long. Mm-hmm. You know, he's been, done thousands of weddings. He, yeah. He's it's seen, crazy. he's witnessed every Everything. situation possible. Yeah. And I felt wh- before I even did a Maritage wedding, I went and shadowed him for at yep. least ten did, weddings. Yeah, I did the same. Oh, well, I only did. I only shadowed like two or three. Wh- whatever it was, I should have done more. But yeah. but just having the confidence to know how to handle every situation yep. puts your mind at ease when there's a lot of pressure on the yeah. day. It builds character, man. Like mm-hmm. I, sometimes I'm in the club and I'm hearing these dudes on the mic, and I'm just there's no there's no identity. You know, mm. yo, yeah, yo, we're doing it like this. Okay, yo, uh, uh, no, dude, man, like. You guys, this is what I used to do. I used to literally hook up my mic. Yes. I'm talking about yes. 19-year-old fingers in my room. Yes. 17-year-old fingers on the mic, just... In the mirror. Belting, just, yeah. just, just, just letting songs play, DJing, talking over them, coming up with things to say, n- learning my control, mm-hmm. learning like, hey, if I, if, I, if I go and I hear it's a hot mic, I know how, how to project, how not to project. Yeah. You know, my mom used to be down, she's like, what are you doing up there? Yeah. For me, it was a f- iPhone voice notes. Yep. Oh, and I, I, like would listen, and I would listen back to them, and I'm like, wow, I'm so awkward. Or That's like, Or like, oh, yo, I sound lit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I tell, uh, this is advice for uh, guys who might not have a big MC bag. Five phrases that you that 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 just make sense to you that like you can say easily feel natural that 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 you say it oh and say those f- yeah that feel natural say those over and over and over and over again no matter if you're blackout drunk djing you've done it so many times that it just comes out yep and like yeah like and i can i can think of like multiple djs where i know what their phrases are because i've heard them so many times and that's like their brand or like that's who they are and like that's what gets them going mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like and then so if you have just again five phrases don't over like you don't have to overthink it anymore yeah. you know what i'm saying now you know to choose between those certain things and you're comfortable yeah you know what i'm saying so djs five phrases practice it listen to yourself whether it's a plugging in a mic whether it's you know listening to voice notes whatever listen back find what those phrases are so then there's gonna be a point where you're just like you're just saying it bro yeah. those are two huge gems <laughs> those Dude, are gonna be a, a lot of free that's game huge. a lot of that's free game huge. there's gonna be a point where you're djing and Fat Man Scoop is the is the guy that uh, you know is the the, the guy that's <laughs> gonna be there, and then he hears you spin yeah. is nasty. Then he hears then so he rocks on the he hopped on the mic for me, and he and he like how, how do you out MC oh Fat Man God. Scoop? Yeah. And then he he was on, and I hopped on the mic. He was like, and I put the mic down. and said, no, keep going. That was like yeah, that's crazy. I was, that's I was epic. twenty years old. That's epic. Yeah, he's like, I mean, MC Goat like pretty and then. You know, he's got every way. hype yeah. in at it yeah, in the yeah. fucking he's, game. He's, pretty, he's like yeah, MC Goat. <laughs> he really much. is. So yeah. when people say, "Yo, fingers, you have you know top one of the top bike in the game," is like they didn't just come from anywhere. When people come up to me like, "Yo, how do you do?" I'm like, "I didn't Dude. always have it." Yeah, I mm-hmm. didn't always have it. It didn't just it didn't just come from anywhere. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Not that you know. Besides my my great rasp voice, you have a cool you know, voice. You have you know a handsome voice. Like, you have a cool voice. I have a, I have a very talking. It's it's very it's very, uh, it's very rustic. Yes. You have you have a grave. Uh, I I think I have an unconventionally sexy voice. You know what I'm saying? Oh. It's not it's not it's not Fifty Shades of Grey, but it's you know, 
I think it's. I'm not uh, gonna lie. I hate mine. <laughs> but but thing is, <laughs> we'll agree to disagree. On that too, right? No, but thing but thing is, but first of all, what a lot of people say is that my talking voice and my MC voice are two very different things. My yeah. my, my MC voice is very car salesman-y, Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. And um, and that's what I mean. Once you find your voice, because mm -hmm. my, my like, if I look at videos of myself DJing like five years ago, and my, and my voice literally sounds different because I'm projecting from a different part of my yeah. belly, from a different part of my throat. Yep. So again, once you get, but it all comes with time with practice. It's a work in progress. It's always, always going to change. I'm sure in five years from now, my my yeah. MC voice is going to sound even more different. Um. Well, give us. I'm trying to smash voice. Hey yo, what the fuck? Right now. All right. Get it, let me get, get him right. Like get him talk? right. This is like pillow yeah, talk. Pillow talk. Right. Get, right. get him right. Get him right. You're at silk. There's like this is something. There's a thing at the bar. No, no. This, this, this is this is that um. You listen to one of them. After um. Magic one oh six point seven. I'm David Allen Boucher. And this is Johnny Gill. Yeah, man. It's it's very important. It's just practice, 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 man. Don't be don't be with everything. Yeah. Um. I know we touched on this a little bit um, before. I would love to. Uh, this was uh, this is a question actually I get a, get a lot, and and also just things that I feel like a lot of older DJs just complain about in general. I mean, I was I was complaining about this even earlier today um, on the show. Um, does the gear make the DJ? What you have as far as like like the gear? Does I don't the, think so. Does the gear make the DJ? I don't think so. I um I definitely believe that you should. Like I said, invest in yourself. Have some, you know, presentable gear. You want to, you know, your 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 beat. You got to present yourself. You can't show up to a, a party with a with a busted, dented, scratched up speaker. Can't do that. People gonna look at that. People gonna judge you, no it's matter how good you ratchet. are. It's yeah. just yeah. ratchet. It yeah. doesn't look good. You know, so you can't have a mic that's all dented and you're passing it off to somebody to talk on the mic. It's it smells like gingivitis. You can't do that. <laughs> you gotta have. You gotta. You know. You gotta update. <laughs> it's true, man. Yeah. Listen, I, I've talked on some mics, and I'm like, "What is yeah, this, yeah, dude?" Yeah, you know, yeah. COVID <laughs> before COVID. Um, so it's 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 definitely it does play a big part. You know, um, being it's it's part of the package. There's ch there's checkoff marks, right? But what, but what about like if if you pull up to if 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 a homie pulls up to a party with you know a, a beginner's controller, like does that define? No, His depends level. how he plays. Dude, my first party, I had uh, a CD Walkman, and I had a f uh, five disc CD changer with a with a a, a home uh, mixer thing. Where, you know, and I rocked. And all right, I rocked. So, so, so let me yeah. ask. So let me ask you all this. There's uh, DJ making a lot of noise. Everyone's saying he's the man. Everyone's saying he's nasty. Mm -hmm. He does. He can't balance a tone arm. He's never used a turntable before. Are you looking at him different? Does that does that put a stain or a dent on his, you know, his 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 image right now? The the turntable purists will say, yeah. Um, so so that's what I'm saying. Like there are dudes that are older, that, that or whatever, or that are purists or whatever you. that will yeah. that will shame you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I don't give a shit. I really don't. Um, Can you rock? Yeah, that's it. Thank you. That's the point. Can like you rock. That's that's what I said. Like if he if he pulls up with like whatever gear he has, and he goes in. And the people are vibing, and I'm vibing. Then I'm like, "Yo, this fucking dude can spin," yeah. you mm -hmm. know. And like I mentioned earlier, it's you know, if you want to get into these places with that type of equipment, you got to go and educate yourself on it. But it doesn't mean that like it. I, I used to not be good on CDJs and S9. You know, it's it it's a work in progress with you know getting comfortable in that equipment and being good on that equipment. But you know, if you're if you can spin at the end of the day, you can spin. So I don't really give a shit what you're playing. No, on. why are you smirking? No, no, no. Now? I'm sorry now because I, I thought about your gingivitis. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's fucking true. Yo, that shit was I've hilarious. grabbed some shit. That was, that was <laughs> I've grabbed some people's mics and I'm just like and like I'm tasting it. I'm like, what is this? It's coming back because I'm blowing in it. Pause. Uh, and it's coming right. The smudge is coming right back. I mean, no, like. You got to Colgate your mic, bro? Oh, you got to dip that shit in Listerine, oh, fam? No. Yo, I, just haven't, I just haven't heard the word gingivitis in like that, years. Bro, Dude, that came out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere, I'd be in the club, you know, people, 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 I would be in the club, people want to come give, tell me something. Whoa. Bro, I almost oh, fell out of my chair, bro. 
Oh, like, no, yes. no, 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 no. I'm I sorry. Like, I feel like I'm going to be laughing at this for like Dude, the next hour. That's that's a clip. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. I'll see that that's on the ground. That's a motherfucking oh. clip. So for me, like, this is this is the order of operation with me when I'm when I'm when I'm like judging somebody when I'm going to DJ. It's like oh, yeah. it's gonna be like, yo, can it's it's gonna be like, yo, can he rock? And then I'm not really even thinking about all the other shit. I'm with you. you know what I'm saying, but then if you can't rock, I'm be like, oh, he can't rock and he can't. You know, yeah. fuck with it's going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's 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 the order of operation for me. Mm-hmm. As far as like, you know, being a bitter, uh, uh, you know, as you get older and there's different generations, man, you got to understand like what's going on with the times. You got to understand how things evolve. So, you know, you know, again, as the person coming in, are you able to learn as a person that's, you know, tenured? Are you able to teach? You know, mm-hmm. are you gonna just gonna sit there and just you know talk shit behind somebody's back and then see them and shake their hand, which I see a lot of, a lot of you bitter old guys that talk shit to, about a lot of the other up and coming DJs, and then when you see them, you're all open arms to say hi and say what up and shit like that, and they walk away, you roll your eyes, cut that shit out, um, <laughs> be fucking real, like step up and, and say what up, like if I ever if I disagree with Cami or, or with Cami or with Snacks or anybody, I'm talking to them about it, even if we disagree to agree to disagree, we're talking about it. At least I know I'm not faking that funk. You know what I'm saying? So be able to teach, teach, be that guy, because then you're not gonna be the guy that's gonna be like, hey, these young guys don't listen. How are you approaching it? Yeah. How are you going about teaching the the young people? Are you preaching down on them? Are you shitting on them? It's two-way no. street. Let them know that they're doing wrong. Hey, mm-hmm. listen, you know, this is what you got to do like you did with your young boy. I'm pretty sure he listened to you and I, he learned from that experience. But you I already had a conversation with him. Tough love. So what? What are you going to do about it? Mm-hmm. Figure it out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's at the end of the day, stop. Like we, we're all in this community. I know Boston is small. We're all fighting for spots and slots and this and that and that. And But let's all be open and transparent with each other. If somebody's doing a, a online mix and that shit's off, I'm going to hit you up. Like, yo, bro, that shit's off. I don't know why people are doing, throwing heat emojis on your comments. That mm. shit is off. Mm. <laughs> Fix it. I'm, do, I'm that kind of guy. Mm. I'm that kind of guy. And I know there's, there's people that be like, yo, oh, that's hate. No, motherfucker, that's not hate. That shit is off. Mm. No, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be I, that guy. I'm not going to be that guy. When I post my videos... Yeah, what do he, I do before he, I post it? He, he always throws in the group He's like, yo, is this fire or not? And you're recording. You have a chance to do it over again. Why are you posting it? Because you know there's going to be people there that are going to be on your jock that just want to suck your dick and be like, yo, that's nah, just fire. You need to have people in your circle. That'll that shit was not fire. <laughs> yep. A million percent, dude. Yeah. A million per- I always, always yeah. send my videos to these guys. And they'll yeah. tell me. And I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I appreciate that. But then there'll be the motherfuckers that like the shit, and then I'm always the vent, the DJ vent guy. So people always hit me up to vent because you know what I'm saying I'm always real with shit. But you like the fucking video? Why are you hitting me up talking shit? Oh. What are you talking about? And that's the thing with Boston too is like there's just like pe- this passive aggressive shit that goes on with motherfuckers. Like we'll go online and and talk to all this shit. Like somebody was posting about uh, opening DJs playing songs like that. I'm like, yo, listen, it's t- it's t- it's 2022 if you're worried about motherfuckers burning you i don't care play all the heat you want in the beginning i my bag is deep if your bag is deep you're not wasting your time online venting about it tag the motherfucker then mm. talk to the motherfucker now did you talk to that dude what is this resulting in you know we all get that <laughs> it's quick to pick up your phone and just fucking yeah i understand yo, but yo, you know, your com- the comment you make uh in most of the posts is like what happened to make you post this? Yeah, he, dude, like, oh, he, oh, he always comments Dude, I'm, I'm straight to the funny. mental with it. What? Is, what, is what, it, what happened what for happened? you to post this? Who what, this what, dude? Because, yo, dude, I'm, I'm a, <laughs> like, dude, I don't confine, I don't confine to the to, to society's bullshit and mirages. I don't do that. And that's, I'm jaded in that way. Where I don't really, like, I don't, I don't play the fucking games. I don't like to do that shit. I, I like to be straightforward and get it done. Sometimes you have to do that. You have to play the game. You know what I'm saying? But like, mm. dude, and that's, what, like, that's dude, why you're a co-host. Fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> this is literally why you're a co-host. Throw this to me on your fucking mic. Stop giving me the mic. It fucking smells like shit. <laughs> For a healthier mouth, starting from day one. Brush your fucking teeth. Brush your fucking <laughs> teeth. <laughs> oh my! God. I gotta put a fucking uh, COVID mask on your mic. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, beautiful. We're going to segue into the newest segment of the show. This is questions and topics from the guest listeners. That is Ooh. a, you know, a nice little thing off of guest list at the club. But 
podcast listeners. I know I made it up. I'm incredible. That's why I have my job. <laughs> the guest listeners, thank you so much for everybody that contributed. We actually got way more um, suggestions than I expected, which is awesome. That's awesome. Uh, we're going to see, you know, uh, how we do on time. And, you know, I'm sure we're going to go on crazy tangents and whatnot. So um, I have a nice uh, list here and we'll kind of just go one by one and uh, see how far we go. Um, and uh, we we're touching about about uh, touching on this a little bit. Question is, in terms of fashion, how much does that impact your image as a DJ and the bookings that you get? Mm. I feel like image is is again another check on the box to becoming a complete a complete entertainer. Mm -hmm. You know, your image is everything, and we were talking about earlier that um, these days compared to, to back in the day they see you before they hear you mm. yeah so that's definitely a complete package but what 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 i'm seeing is the opposite i'm seeing people that are f more focused on because of this of the shift in you know with the social media and people you know um basically your your, your social media page is your reality tv show mm -hmm. um this that's you know people are on there to, to to gig off your life so a lot of people are more focused on their looks instead of their actual skill their craft yeah their craft so yeah. that's where it, like find that balance don't just right. um don't just focus on one thing and not the other they all play within within each other like what you post when you post how you look like i have i've had guys show up to parties that are that are fine phenomenal djs but they showed up looking dingy mm. and that was a problem they rocked but management was like yo why did he show up looking yeah. like that or why did he, you know like it's yo. just it's it's just I, you get you get comfortable some people get comfortable there, there I, I there's I, yeah sorry, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. there there's there's definitely boxes in the in the whole thing of being a dj there's definitely boxes that you need to hit and prioritize um your craft should be at the top yeah but also your image should be up there as well yeah below the right below it because if you hit me up on instagram asking for me to book you someplace and i go look at your instagram and it's you djing at places in fucking sweatpants yeah that's not a good look yeah uh, like it, it, it is we what do it is bookings, bro, like, like if you if you matters. pull up if you pull up to a gig and you're not and you're not the dj and you're wearing what you're wearing and the club won't let you in yeah what the How fuck is that balenciaga sweatpants mm, balenci Valenci? I don't know, man. What? Well, Bro, well, if, would they would the would the would the security staff let you in? Well, right. I was gonna say yeah. if, if the dress code is no sweats, like don't like. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like, yeah. but that's but that's a thing. Like DJ or not, like you you need to you're you're essentially uh, an extension of the of the venue. Yep. Yeah, you know, you're the guy that they're taking pictures of. You're yes. the guy that's on the stage. Yes, they see you. Yes, you mm. know, if you're dressed like a scrub. Yes, you know, man, it's not a good look. I'm not saying that you gotta. Being all designer, that's not what I'm, that's no. not what no. I don't think any of us no, are saying. No. What I'm saying though is, would you go to your office job like that? Exactly. You know, if this is if if you take this shit seriously, if this is work to you, you should know how to like. Did we do is ask me like how should I dress, bro? You got no you got no swag. <laughs> I'm like you're, you're asking me like like a life question, bro. Yeah, you know like what I'm saying? Like, like, like if you got no hygiene, if you got no swag. Like that's that's <laughs> not a, that's not a it's not a me or you like that's not a me issue. That's a you in life yeah. issue. Like now I know where you got no shorties, bro. You got no fucking <laughs> swag. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and again, this this yeah, it doesn't mean it have to be dripped out, chains. Like like you find your own style, but at the end of the day, be presentable. You know, look nice because at the end of the day, like you're, yeah, you're you're, you're like, I'm sure you're expecting to have pictures taken of you. You're gonna be elevated. You're gonna be have people are gonna be looking at you. And yeah, for that night, people are gonna think like you are. I mean, there's levels to it, but like you're an employee yeah, of of yeah. the of the venue. You know what I'm saying? So. I had this one. I have this one very specific um, instance where I had a homie pull up and, and DJ with me at a certain club, and there was a point he he takes off his shirt um, for the wife beater, or the wife pleaser as as we call it now. Um, he's showing up. He's he's takes off his his t shirt and he's wearing a wife pleaser under, and the manager comes up to me. He's like, "Yo, what's like? This isn't the fucking trap, bro." Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like looking at him. Yeah. I'm like, "Yo, this does look kind of crazy." Yeah. Like. And he's like, yo, t can you tell him to put your shirt back on? To put his shirt back on? And it put me in a weird place. Because mm. I had to go up to homie and be like, yo, man, like this is going to sound kind of wild, but like, can you put your shirt back on? Yeah. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, but like. You're not a yoki. But yeah, you look like you're cooking right now. <laughs> you know what I'm yoki. saying? Like, There's levels to this. Yeah. And, and and it was just like a weird thing, but like, I kind of, I, I, I get it. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. And, and yeah, like the dudes that pull up in sweats and slides, I'm like, bro, this is work. 
Yeah. Are right. you seeing dudes in slides? Yeah, yes, bro. Yes. In, in polo sweatpants and slides, bro. And, and no, oh my god, don't be, don't be, don't be pulling up to the venue in a push iced bro. I can't. <laughs> You're robbing the place. Literally. Bro, why are you pulling up at the Literally. Iced, bro? Literally. <laughs> You're making me nervous. <laughs> Like, hey, you blame Kanye. Blame Kanye. Blame Kanye. Like, that. I'm just like, so, again, this this doesn't mean you got to blow a bag on the wardrobe, but, like... Be if presentable. You, but, yeah, if, if if you're looking to play at bigger places and get bigger bread, you need a, you need to match that energy. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, 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 it, it's really... I don't know why people look at this industry and, and, and think it doesn't, those same rules don't apply with yeah. any other industry. I don't get it. it when it comes job. to manners, when it comes to how you're presenting yourself, when it comes to professionalism, respect, I don't get why people think this is different. It's it, not. It's a job. It's a fun job, but it's a job at the end of the day. Yeah. And be presentable. You got to keep up with yeah. it. Man. And, and there's some dudes like uh, where I look at them and I'm like, yo, this is a quintessential DJ. They're. And they're like they're dressed to the nines. They get a haircut every week. Like, yep. and and I hope that your career goes that way where you can do that. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't happen to everybody. Right. And even when it does happen to you, some people that's just not their vibe. So again, that's not, that's what I'm. That's not what I'm saying. You don't have to be like that. But me personally, you know, I try and dress and present myself in a, in a certain way where people are like, "Yo, this dude is successful in what he does," and because of that, I trust what he does. And so if, if I'm not really fucking with what he's doing, maybe it's me. Yeah. Because probably it is you. Yeah. Because I'm nice. You know what I'm saying? And handsome. What do you insecure mm -hmm. about? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, but if it's like, but if I'm like a bum ass dude, they're like, oh, they probably just got Joe Schmo from around the way because the real DJ yeah. got sick. You know what I'm saying? Like this shit matters and it's reflective and of And especially right? coming up, you're trying to yeah, bro. Set, set the tone. You're setting the tone. Yeah. You know, so like definitely like, you know, and like I said, they see you before they hear you. You brought up the social media thing. Yeah. That, the, um, I, I did want to touch on that a little bit because um, it is just marketing 101, like how you present yourself. I think. Um, and again, it works. Different things work for different people in different situations. I personally, like my Instagram is like, is a snacks Instagram. Yeah. It's not Jeremy's Instagram. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's just, that's a decision I made back when I was like 23. Like, and, and you know, years ago where I was just like, this is how, like, you know, I've seen just the, the dudes that I wanted to be like. I was like, I'm looking at their IGs and like their shit's crazy popping. It's like their gigs, it's them rocking it. And like, so when I pull up on their page, I'm like, they're the fucking man. You so can feel the. You can feel the it. Energy. Yeah, yeah, and, yep. and, and it might be part of you know part of it is that thing that's like okay if a promoter stumbles on my page I want them to be like oh this dude rocks yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah you know seeing me before he hear me but no I'm gonna come with the hearing part later you know what yeah, I'm saying exactly. have, have and, and the balance sprinkle, of the two and you sprinkle content in there too so yeah they can, they can hear yeah, you too yeah yeah you know? exactly so like I think. I think uh, young DJs should be intentional about what they're posting. I think, you know, I, I look at some DJs who, you know, they're trying to elevate us and stuff, and it's like pictures of their dog and their ugly girlfriend and shit, and I'm like, no one cares about that shit. You know what I mean? It, like, it's hard. Like, you should intertwine the, the, the two. I know yeah. sometimes, like, you know, like, it is part of your life. It's a big part of your life. Like, sometimes, like, I post, you know, rarely, but sometimes I'll post, like, my kids and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. it's, it's like, in a rare occasion. Like I said, there's no... It, it, it's 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 it works differently for different people and and i think obviously the time like i remember uh, my homie recently got married and like he's posting he's posting all this like wedding content and shit of, and like him with his his new wife and uh, and i remember i made like a joke about it he was like yo people love love he, he was just like he was like this is the most engagement i've ever had in my life yeah like people just like love that we're like in love and like our wedding pictures and shit and i'm like you know what I'm saying And that works And like He was like Yo my father's going up Everyone's like Liking my, all my shit I'm like okay cool Good man yeah. You know what I mean Absolutely. Like so Hats off, yeah. So there's all different shit But yeah. you know I yeah. think Unfortunately DJing has No not unfortunately Because I got it uh, DJing has become a thing Where it's way more Than the music For better mm. or for worse Yeah mm. A lot of it It just is what it is It now. just is what it is You gotta come correct On multiple facets Of you know of who you are it really kind of takes over who you are in many aspects you're entertaining you you're know an entertainer. you're an entertainer, you're an entertainer yeah. so you know come correct on all aspects like if, if like i picked up design and shit to be able to do my own shit because i wanted my all my shit to look a certain way yep. shit like that you know i had to learn all these other things um to get what i wanted to get out and get done yeah. um i i don't post i personally don't post any photos from an iphone that's just how I want to be represent myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, again, that's not I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but you know You have your game plan. I have my game plan, yeah, yeah, to what you said from the very beginning. You know what I'm saying? So know what it's just you 
have a direction. You, your, you as a D should be a brand. Every brand has a marketing team that has a marketing direction that they want to go to for a reason. You need to have that with yourself. Okay. Talk to someone who has a marketing degree and let them holler at you or whatever. Yeah. Like, really, if you want to be taken seriously, take it seriously. And again, balance, balance, balance. Don't look the part if you can't do it because then you're getting booked in these spots and then you're ruining your chance. Sometimes it takes one time. You don't know who's in that room, who's hearing you, and who yep. knows. You, you don't know. Yep. So you got to play like this. The PDDs in the back yes. listening to you. Yep. That's I've, how you I've got whole ass game. weddings on like average ass gigs where they're like, yo, I had this one dude who was like, who was Latino and he was marrying a white girl. And he was like, yo, we've been looking for a DJ who can do both. And you're doing it right now. He was like, can you do our wedding? And I was like, yeah. Perfect. Like, yeah. Never act like, even if it's dead. Take every gig seriously. Take every gig seriously and play yeah, like man. play like you're gonna fucking die tomorrow. I've played in a room where, like I said, there was like less, not that much people in there, um, and one of the fucking uh, dudes that are in charge of like entertainment at at Fenway was there. Yeah, he came up, gave me his card. Yep, dude, you never know, bro. Whoa, he's like, whoa, nice. And he just gave me the card. He's like, dude, I, I work for Fenway. Yep, um, we're opening up a spot there. We need you in there. And now, and, and like I could have easily just just shit it that day because well, there's nobody there. Yep. You know, but I played. You know what I'm saying? I played. Yeah, like, you could have phoned it in. Exactly. Oh, no one's here. Fuck it. Well, yeah. let me ask you a question on this a social media thing. How do you feel about dudes buying uh, followers and, and impressions and all this I, stuff? Like I think that? that's fucking stupid. I I think I get why because I've done gigs where they add someone on the bill. Oh, like I, where I ask the promoter why you add them. Oh, they're, they're like popping. And I'm like, how popping are they? And I look, they're like, oh, they got this many followers. Okay, but like, how good are they? Oh, I don't know, but they got this one. I'm like, okay, but you they, have me. They, they equate, they equate mm, you know the I mean? followers <clears throat> to to people yeah. and money in in the room. Yeah, and I'm like, but you have me, so who who? So I don't get it. Oh no, they're gonna bring. Are they? You're not jumping from 5k to 15k in a month. It's not happening, unless not even if Kanye West posted you. It's not happening. It doesn't mm-hmm. happen that fucking quick. Yeah. And then there's the dudes that do that shit, and then they brag about, they brag about shit. So, dude, stop it, like, like stop. That's why, like, I some of like I'm, I I stay off of Facebook sometimes. I'm just like I should not be here <laughs> because I'm gonna get in an argument with fucking everybody. I'm like, yo, bro, I know, I know what's going on. I see it. It's Bro, it's not real. It's not authentic. It's not authentic. And we had the conversation too, where he was like, he was like, you know, don't do it. Yeah. Don't po- Don't don't buy. Don't stay real to whatever you have. I got I got my six K plus. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll get to that point. Like, there's no point in me doing that. You know, I want to I want to build an organic. I just don't understand fan it. base. I just don't understand it though. I, it's the clout. It's the clout. It's a, cl- that, it's a clout that's thing, where we at. Yeah. They see know, you man. before they hear you. It's the clout. Yeah. If I have the six K, if I have the check mark, if I have this, it's gonna make me a better fucking D. It's gonna make me this. It's gonna book me here. It's gonna make me look legit, dude. I know. Cause me, me personally, I'm I'm going to your page and I'm looking for the content that you have. I don't I don't give a shit about followers. I don't you know, and like it's funny too because like those people will have like ten thousand followers and like twenty likes on a fucking picture. Yeah. It's like so. It's like it, it it for me. It's like all right. If anyone does even a little bit of homework, like you can see right <laughs> through it, right? But like for me personally, I'll go to I'll go to that person's page. And be like all right, like any mixes, any like yeah. reels, anything like that. Just something stories. I, I will look for it. You pay attention to detail, just like me. Like that's why, like I pick these things apart, and I'm like, "Yo, teach your own. Whatever works for you. If that works for you, that's fine. But don't sit there and brag about it and and say, oh, 'Oh, I'm this, I'm that, my 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 this, my this is that.' No, bro, you you bought followers. Relax. I'm, I'm gonna say this, and and and, I, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna end this conversation with this. I have a marketing degree. I worked five years in corporate marketing, digital marketing specifically. So I have an idea of how this shit works. Typically speaking, brand to brand, you're looking for 20% engagement compared to your following. So, if you have 100k, if you have 100k followers, <clears throat> that should mean you have 20k likes on an average post, average. give or take, give or take, 18, 21, yeah. maybe drops to 16, Fluctuate, whatever. Yeah, whatever. If you have 100k followers and you have 600 likes, that's a huge red flag. Let's take it smaller. Let's say if you, so if you have a thousand followers you know 20 fuck 200 yeah yeah 200 likes 15k it's really but 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 200 like is a lot is good like you know that's that's 
what we should be looking for. You know what I'm saying? So, me personally, I use that rule of thumb. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, it varies. Women, beautiful women, they can have a thousand followers and have fucking eight hundred likes. Like it's crazy. Um, if I had a BBL, my my IG would be crazy, bro. It's still like, time. There's still time. There is still time. You're it's right. Still time. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Like, there's obviously exceptions to this. Um, I think you know the beautiful women or influencers, or whatever you want to call them, definitely break that rule of thumb. But that's the rule of thumb I usually go off of when I'm looking at um, you know if people's followers are, are real because yeah. again it, people 30k followers and they get tw- the same likes i get and i got four thousand followers how that makes yeah. sense how it, that, does. How it, that does. it doesn't so anyway <clears throat> i'm gonna end that conversation with that do what you want with that information um but yeah, yeah. um next question um we, we talked about this a little bit on the last uh episode i think I feel we, we can uh, talk about this a little bit i don't know if this was like a joke when is peppa's gonna die <laughs> peppa's is a staple it's not gonna die I think it's like the new Calabria. New Calabria, it's the new shots. It's not gonna die. Like I think it's one of those things that I feel like back in two thousand seven that then eh, eh, I'm sure I got tired at one point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People were like, Okay, we heard we heard it at every party, like whatever whatever. And there's gonna be a part where like you cannot go a party without playing. And yeah. it came at a time where that tempo of music there hasn't really been an anthem. Right. It came at that time. Just like for me, I feel like um you sh- you can go anywhere and play that song. Any demographic that transcends oh, yeah. it yeah, transcends yeah. race. It transcends everything genre. You know, it, it's 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 a staple that's gonna stay um, to the point where when you have that when you have an artist trying to literally mimic the song and try to do something new, you know, you know, like right, Fado, right, Fado, right, right, tried it a few right, times. Right, right. He hit with the with the pasta yeah, 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 yeah. it, it hit, but it wasn't as you know, I like that record a lot. It's dope. It's yeah, dope. Yeah. It's 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 up there. People sometimes people go from that to that, um, mm-hmm. but Pippa ain't going. Yeah, it's yeah. it's too much. No. It's like way too much. It's no. it's it, it was just such a. It was really groundbreaking, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was. I remember the first time I heard it, and uh, I was at I was at my friend's. So this is uh, maybe two summers ago now, um, or last. I don't remember. It was in the summertime. We were definitely in lockdown. Yep. And I remember I was at my boy's crib and his home gr- and his Dominican homegirl from New York was in town. And we're just like on Ox, whatever. And she's like, yo, I need you. Can you play this song? And I never heard of it. It was, it was Pepa's. And I, was, and I just hear like the, pe- and I'm like, yo. Yeah, big record. Ho- stadium music, bro. And then once the fucking Trump, I was, bro. And I was just like, I never heard, I never heard this shit before. Like, I never heard this kind of music before. Uh, Which I know what we said last yeah. episode was Guaracha, Guaracha right? Guaracha, yep. Um, but I was like, yo, this is a lot of people don't know what they're talking about in the song. They're talking about pill popping. Yeah, so it's funny. Be- <laughs> so it's so it's so it's funny because you ever hear like the clean version of it? Yeah, yeah. And there's like a lot of uh, ear, a lot of uh, like <laughs> yeah, edits yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, but obviously, if you don't speak Spanish or anything like that, you're kind of just like saying whatever. Yeah, um, it's like on the main in the chorus. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So they they do block it out. But that's that's how big the song is. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of like. Uh, What's it called? The the TOK song that Which people one? sing and they don't know what the hell. It's talking oh, about. Chichiman. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was I was like way too old when I found out what that song was. Yeah, about. bro. And then when I sat there and I figured, I'm like, oh shit, why yeah. is it still not canceled? <laughs> I mean, it's just so old. It's like, not going to. It's not there. So I I have a I have a, um, <laughs> I have a, a queer Jamaican homegirl, and she's actually the one who hit me to it. Um. So. We were, I remember I was playing or I was singing it or whatever and she was like, yo, like I, I did she was like, I can't believe I like still like this song. I'm like, and mind you, she's Jamaican. And I was like, What what do you mean? She's like, You know what it's talking about, right? I'm like, <laughs> nah, I don't speak like Patois and she's like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. She was like, Yo, like it's talking about like like gays and like yeah. like hating on like gay people. And I'm like, What? I'm like, I'm like, this shit bang. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like I'm like, but, but but at the time this came out early two thousands, like that yeah. was really the vibes, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And she was like, but she was still partying to it. So I'm like, so we straight. It's the culture. Like, the I'm like, Jamaican yeah. culture too. Like, yeah. they're really, without diving into it too much. Right, right, right. I don't right, want right. to offend nobody, but right, right, right. Uh, it's just how the culture is out there too. Right, 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 right. Uh, moving on. Um, this was a question we received as well. Takes on scratching during DJing. Oh, uh, I love this one. Yeah, I like this uh, one too. I like this, this one too. a good question. I feel like uh, DJs that know how to scratch, you can scratch at a party without... Um, you can show that you can scratch without overdoing it. Um, you're not at a battle. 
Okay. Uh, even my some of my guys that I that I came up with, he had to he had to find that that happy medium to where he wanted to do that. Like I get it, juggling back and forth and doing that like stuff like that. That's fine. But if you're gonna sit there and cut for eight bars, yo. Okay. Yeah. Relax, because you, you, what you're doing is you're taking attention off the song, and you and somebody's looking at you. You can yeah. do it in a tasteful way to where if you want to cut it in. If you have a vocal, right. chop it in. Yeah. There's there's you mean like there's there's a fine line between being like a battle DJ, a battle cut DJ, and a party rocking DJ. Yeah. But the best DJ is the one that finds that happy medium yeah. right in between and can implement that sort of skill in their sets and highlight certain points throughout the night and use that as a tool to turn heads rather than have people like like yo play the fucking song like i'm trying to i'm trying to yeah, vibe right bro, now it's in 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 club scenarios a lot of people want to believe it or not listen to the song mm -hmm. and like party to the song um i know some of the most talented turntablists and people who can you know scratchers oh like I'm so technically good. I'm so good. I'm so talented. Like, why don't I get bookings? All this, all this club shit is whack. Eh, it's because you're fucking cutting on everything, and no yeah. one wants to hear that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I would encourage you. I would encourage Easy DJ to develop a scratch bag. It, I, to be honest, it doesn't have to be that deep. No. If, if if your goal is to do like just clubs and parties and stuff, I think scratching certain things can really, you know, if you're really going that deep and working hard and like you know layering in terms of your DJ can add a lot of color. Yeah, you know, learn how to properly flavor, yeah. scratch. Like, yeah, yeah. There's dudes that are just going, just, just, not, just, not just, to the just, just to do it. Just, just to do it. That's a clip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Over the song, like no, dude, no. Yeah, yeah. They use the fader, like know yeah. how to do, like yeah. you can cut without using the fader. You know, yeah. there's the ways to do ba it, but like baby, yeah, baby scratch, baby scratches. Like you yeah. gotta have, you gotta know what you're doing. Have yeah, some flavor right. there. Yeah, but yeah, but but at the same time, there are different. uh demographics and cultures where it's like different levels of it is like i know in the caribbean culture like juggling and like pulling it back and starting like it is more normal it's part of it it's yeah. part of it's part of it and it's like part of the experience and that's why so many of those djs are like are so into it and like need to learn all these i mean it's all the same they all learn the same fucking cuts because like that's like the style yeah you know what i'm saying but then I, and then they're like trying to like branch over to other spots and i'm like yo but that, that's not the style here yeah. right you know what i'm saying like you can't be doing all that shit because everyone's gonna look at you crazy you know what i mean like me coming up playing dance hall like i even like them taking off the pitch thing and when they speed up the song and it sounds more chick monkey and them speeding it up times 10 that's a culture thing yeah it, it is, is. It that's is. A culture I, went thing. To, I went to dc and malcolm xavier was like bro what are you doing and i was like it was like plus eight and I was like, uh, I don't know, like this is kind of. I think, I think it's, I think most so songs sound better sped up, spe a little bit sped up in the club. Like I think they just it's yeah. an energy, it's yeah, an energy, it's an energy thing. thing. It moves yep. a little better. And then I noticed when he was, he he didn't even move it. Like it was, it was old. And and but I was like, I was like, yo, when, when you're transitioning through like genres, like sometimes you need to do it. You know, you, my you shit's meet them in the middle. Six, my shit's I mean? on plus sixteen all the time. My I, shit's on plus sixteen all the time too. I love you guys. Yeah, because you're able to like, because on the fly, I don't want to like, no, I'm all the way down here on the eight, and I want to speed it up a little bit. Yeah, no. yeah. that's why I don't like playing on Technics. Yeah, cause not because the vinyl shit is because yeah. you're gonna stop me at eight. Yeah, the know. the ones I have, I love the PLXs because it ha it gives it, you like it gives you the option yeah, to go the range. plus sixteen like that. So yeah. like it's just like obviously there's a, a you know if you're creative enough there's there's ways you can do it. So you yeah. know you know you have the ear make it sound a certain way. Like obviously I'm not gonna speed up a super slow song and get yeah i mean fast. yeah a lot of like there's my a method to the madness a lot of my transitions that are like cross genres i will definitely speed it up you yeah. know to make it sound better yeah. but and they sound fucking great together you know but i am speeding up that yeah absolutely like yeah. there's to. remixers that do songs and like they'll play like this is i'm like no that don't sound good like mm -hmm. yeah and i'll stay away from that even like with, with along with the scratching um playing the songs that have build ups and drops a lot of people want to hear the original song or some variation of the original song something close to it but when you're playing back to back like a lot of DJs they play back to back like build up and drops back to back people start to get annoyed because every it's the same thing drop back to back to back that's annoying and you mm -hmm. gotta find again find that pacing, balance within pacing that, is you know big. What I'm saying? yeah pacing is really big um so yeah scratching i mean again i think wrapping that up you know, I I think I think if you're a DJ, I think you should be able to scratch to a an extent. Yeah. Um, I think if you just have like zero scratching abilities, like like I had to develop it. Like you know, I I think I I can do scratches. I can do cuts. I'm not 
nearly the best, even the best graduate in this room. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. but I can do whatever I need to do. And like, I like I'll, scratching. I'll scratching. do it once and be like, hey, hey guys, I can do it. All right, let's yeah. move on. You know it's what I mean? It's not the end all be all. No, We're not scratching. That. Yeah, scratch, scratching is a very big part of my sound and my style. Yeah. I take a lot of pride in it. I put a lot of work into it. Yeah. But there's also very other important things that you have to yeah. do. Don't rely on scratching just to scratch into a record, slam records. Yeah. Get back to the basics. Blend. Learn how to blend. Because I do that a hell of a lot more in my sets than I do scratching. Yeah. And it doesn't saturate the sound yeah. of a scratch. Because it's not people aren't gonna get people are gonna get sick of it if you do it every fucking song. And yeah. I, I have young bulls who are like so into the scratching and slam records. The, you know, scratching into the slam and then like juggling and shit and then and they're only posting like the videos they post is only of them scratching, and I'm like, yo, that's just not gonna get you gigs, bro. No, like, so I hate to be that guy. Like, I had to message one of them, be like, yo, I'm gonna be real with you. That's not gonna get you any gigs. Like, no, none of these promoters or patrons can even fucking care that you can scratch. Scratching is a very big dick measuring contest to other DJs. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And for the fact of the matter is, that's not gonna help really help you in terms of the gigs that you want. Not at all. You know what I'm saying. When you're at, a, if you want to be a turntablist and battle DJ, great. They're gonna love you. They're gonna suck your dick. It's gonna be great. You're gonna win some awards. It's gonna be awesome. But I'm sure for at least the guys that I'm running with, that's not what that's not really what their goals no, are. So, so I'm not. like, yo, put that away. Get your bag up. You know what I'm saying? And learn how to like rock more crowds. Stop worrying about all this fucking scratching, bro. Unless you want to do battles. Oh, you don't want to do battles? Okay, stop. You got a bag. <clears throat> Let's move on. There's ways to implement it in your sets. Mm -hmm. Um and definitely like it, it highlights certain moments and then i like I, I it's always a work in progress like we said earlier but i think especially for me too just finding the time and place when to do it especially yeah. like what, whatever it is you know too much of anything is bad too right. much water can yeah. kill right. you right right yeah. water is good for you but too much water can kill yeah, too you. much emceeing people can people, kill you. people yeah. complain about that yeah. you know um awesome this was uh i i i i'm happy that i didn't have to bring this topic up let's just say that so the initial message was venues, quote unquote, owning DJs. So I asked for uh, for this person to elaborate. And they said, you know, certain residencies that you cannot leave. You, ha you can only play at these certain places. The venue owns you. I don't think I need to give examples of spots. No, I think we all, no we don't have no. to. Uh, to me, it's... Um what are you getting out of it? Are you for me it's is at my stage in my in my career is um are you going to um give me the the gigs that I that I would have gotten? Are you gonna pay me the money that I should be getting for this? Me personally, like I feel like you should be able to you should be free to DJ wherever you want to DJ. Um yep. Yep. me personally I I love moving around. Um you know, if I do residencies, it's usually once a month or twice a month. Right. It's not a right. fixed. I get bored quickly. Yes. I'm I'm 100% agree. So for me, um, you know, it's it's all about what you, again, your plan, your goal. If you want to sit there and you want to get this, they book you once a month here, but you can't go DJ anywhere else. Cool. Fine. But what about a weekly, though? If you're there every week. If you're there every week. Again, it, it, it ha it's up to if you're happy with the pay. You're happy with what's there, you know. So there's a number for you that if this was like, hey, every week here, can't play anywhere else, can't even talk to anyone else. This is there, there's a number for you where you're like, okay, they're paying me enough where I'll do that. It would be it would be it's high, high. It's high, but there's a number. It is number. It's high. I don't know. And then and then and then with that comes, do I like the environment? Yeah. What's the nights like? Are there switching up their nights? It's the same thing every week. Yeah, right? you know what I'm saying. So that's that's it, it all plays that plays into it. But personally, for me, I like jumping around, I like being put in different, um, you know, environments and stuff like that. Because then you, I feel like you get sometimes you get complacent. Yep. It's the same patrons, same people, you yeah. play the same music. So that's what my issue is. Yep, it, and that's why I don't know if there's a number because. If you're playing at the same place for the same crowd, no one's going to discover you because yeah. you're playing for the same type of people. And then you inevitably become lazy because yeah. yeah. you're playing the same, same set, music. same music yep. every time. Yep. Like I love the fact that I can bounce around and my, my I'll have a four gig weekend and each of them is very different from the mm -hmm. other Yeah. because I love music and I love challenging myself and I love 
the variety. Yep. There might I'm sure there's gonna be a point where I maybe I'm older or whatever the fuck and I'm like, okay, I, this is just the one spot I love. Like, and that's whatever, what I'm saying. Whatever. It matters to what where yeah. you where what, you at what you in your career. Do. If that's yeah. you know, if that's your, if you're happy with that, but yeah. personally for me right now, no, nah, it's but, not but and, I, for me. Uh, yeah, and I'd say most of those places don't have that variety. Like if it was like a different theme or whatever, like, oh, like this night we're doing this type of genre or whatever whatever it is, right? They have a different theme every night, so you're not playing the same music. Most of those places don't do that. Yeah, no. So for me, at this time, I would say no. no. Like there really isn't a number for me. I love, like like you said, I love the variety. I love pushing my sh- myself and challenging myself to do different, do different parties, do different types of crowds, do different types of genres of music. I've yeah. been in situations where um, I've DJed at a certain, like, you know, first establishment or whatever for a certain amount of years, and, you know, their competition wants to book me, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, at that point, I'm having the, I'll am having have the respectful conversation with you, but, hey, I'm going to go DJ over here. Is it cool with you? If you say no, then I'm saying, are you making me priority? Are you booking me? Are you, is, is my name coming up first before you book somebody else? Are you making sure that that money comes in my pocket? If you're not, then I'm sorry. I'm going to go DJ. I'm going to spread my wings. I'm going to do that. Um, so it's, it's like I said, like it's 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 where you want to be and what you want to do and, and um, how you feel about you know the spots you're spinning at. So it's like, yeah. like you said, like I love playing music, period. No matter what it is, like I want to be, I want to be able to play "Living on a Prayer." Yeah. You know? So I'm gonna go DJ at the spot where I can play "Living yep. on a Prayer." Yep. So yep. I want to be able to play "Pop Smoke" or something like yep. that, yep. and go into a deep crate set of of drill. I want to be able to DJ at that spot as yeah. well. Yeah. But I get easily bored, so I don't want to. I mean, there's some, that. but there are also some DJs that aren't open format like we are. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so they're beyond content with being like, "Oh, I get to play this one genre that I." have Yep. That's the only genre that right. I play my, every week. That's my fine. my yeah. favorite nights are where the crowd changes throughout the night in, in the same venue. Yeah, yeah, and, or throughout the seasons. And throughout the seasons, but like even in the same night, like Tunnel, for example. Oh yeah, is you a never great, know, dude. You never know yeah, who's walking, but the crowd changes so fast there. Like every half hour, it's different. Yep, and I love I love that yeah, more yeah, than yeah. anything because a now I'm I'm using my skills to assess the situation in the room. And be like, all right, who's in here right now? Let me try playing this type of record. Oh, I got a big reaction out of that. Boom, I'm going to hit this bag. Mm-hmm. And it changes, like, liter- literally, like, before your eyes. Next thing you know, you look up, and it's like, oh, my God, there's fucking 50 white people in here. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, let, me, let me get out of my dance hall bag. Well, like, yeah, when yeah. I did Bodega in Florida, they have uh, Miami for Fort Lauderdale. I think they're opening a third one somewhere. Um, so the thing with Miami is, in a place like, in a place like Bodega, they open at 9 and go till 4. And so obviously it's a long time playing so you're gonna and there's gonna be waves so like nine to like 11 was like pregame crowd before they go to live or whatever the fuck yeah. you know what i'm saying but then there are the clubs like the wharf is across the street and that club closes at two so then you have another wave of post post vibes you know what i'm saying so there was like really three there was there was nine to 11 where it's pregame 11 to two where it was like main crowd and then there was two to four post crowd three completely different that's waves. That's awesome. And I, and, like, and I was watching it, like, happen. That's awesome. Because they would turn over the tables, too. Mm. So I was, like, watching it happen, and I'm like, yo, like, like who the, f- like, all now, like, all, like, the ratchet, ratchet chicks yeah. are here? Oh, shit. That's good. Like, they, you know, in the middle, it was all, like, the, the super cutesy girls, like, that was their vibe for the night, and then they're gonna go out at, at two. And then, like, you know, obviously the people that came up f- for two to four were, like, people, like, party, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And um, so, like, that was something that I was like, wow, this is so, this place is so cool. Like, That's dope. very interesting. Like, I, I really, really enjoyed it for that reason. That's why I kind of like DJing bar crawls because mm-hmm. I want to keep, yeah, like, yeah, keeping, yeah, yeah. keeping the people there because they're in and out. They're there. Yeah. That's, the, that's the whole goal. So you keep somebody at, from a bar crawl there. Like, if they miss their bus or they miss this or that, like, that's dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't want to go nowhere. I wanted to stay here. Blah, blah, blah. Or they come back. That's the best feeling. Yeah, yeah. One more. How to tell an experienced DJ from a novice DJ do's and don'ts of DJing at certain venues. So I think there's some obvious things I think, you know, throughout our conversation, just throughout yeah. the episode today, we've touched on a lot. But if there's anything else that's kind of hanging out there, what are some? And then again, the do's and don'ts of DJing as well. Are we talking about like at a specific venue or? Um, th- this is all exactly, I literally copied and pasted these. So I didn't, okay. um, so it was how to tell an experienced DJ from a novice DJ. Okay. And then do's and don'ts of DJ. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it in as like as if you're a patron walking in. How do I know if this guy is like the real deal or not? Sure. Um, I think a lot of it comes down to 
<laughs> song selection and like j if it sound <laughs> if it doesn't sound good if like <laughs> if they're playing like full full on records full and, records I think is a big one uh, full records um, if they're not blending music you know and like you know scratching here and there you know if they're not doing any of that type of stuff if there really isn't no emceeing if it's that type of venue then that's I think that's another one too um, I'm trying to think what else would really be a good one here I think. Um if you're in a place, especially in Boston, is a melting pot of different cultures and people, races, and stuff like that. And usually the spots are now very mixed. Um, being able to de so like to DJ for different crowds within one night and keeping the flow, you know, like that's that's pretty tough to do. Um, I think that's um, I can tell when a DJ is really good when they can keep the hype up and you have like you know you have the white girl you have the trap crowd you have the latin and you can and they're all mixing mingling with each other and having fun that is um that's mm -hmm. dope and me like you know getting people to get off the wall early dance you yeah. know what i'm saying that's that's something good for me um i'd say also uh how you open for me is is, is huge i, I i'm barely there to open up a club like as far as like when you go out so it's hard to really tell but um if i'm if i book a dj to open up for me that's that's one of my maybe can you get the party going without playing a a, a, a chico Cause that's experience yeah mm -hmm. like, like you have yeah you have to develop that back you know yeah. what i'm saying like yeah. and that's the thing with when i tell about a lot of openers bro i'm like if, if i'm the closer headliner whatever you want to call it I'm supposed to really only supposed to play the, the best records of the last like three to four years. Yeah. So I, I was like, I'm the one that's limited. I'm giving you 2,000 years <laughs> worth of music and you're playing records from yeah. this year? Yeah. yeah. You don't have yeah. a bag. You don't have a bag. Like, because because there's timeless records, bro. Yeah, there's man. records from 2005 yeah. that are can still ring, especially on the early vibe. Why are you playing yeah. shit from this year, bro? Because like, you don't got it like that. Like, I, I told you, I had a guy open up for me dropping all this shit and everything i'm like oh go ahead i didn't say nothing yeah i didn't say nothing bro at fucking one o'clock i'm playing <laughs> the way you make me feel and the crowd is screaming got way more reaction than what, what i'm playing because then again you got to understand it's just like if you're playing a, a record that should be playing at the end of the night and nobody's lit everyone's coming in they're still mingling they're still talking you just missed a moment yeah yeah let me ask you would you play some of those records again that they played early on, like those big. Time I records. would rather die than yeah, no, than play a record no, twice. No, no. So when I so when if I if I walk in at midnight and I'm about to go on, I always check the opener's history. Really? Yeah, I like that. Cause it, and and it's funny. Uh, I did that with um a DJ once, and like months later, he was. Cause I think that was the first time I like met him or DJ with him once. Months later, he was like, "Yo, like." I think we might have both been like drunk at something like day parties and shit. He was like, "Yo, you know how I knew you were you was for real?" I was like, "How, bro?" He's like, "Cause you checked my history before you went on, and you didn't play, you didn't replay a single record." And I'm like, "Bro, my bags like that, bro." But anyway, um, if you want to go off and like have your moment and play all the big records, you fucked yourself, bro, because no one's vibing with you. And I'm gonna do it all, and I'm not gonna play a single record from this year. And you're gonna and you're gonna see yeah. how it really just to prove down. a point. Just to prove a point. Yeah. I did that at at at, uh, at at Hava a couple of weeks ago. It was it was a, it was a slower night, and because it was a little slow, like these dudes were trying to were using cheat codes the whole way. Mm. And I'm not gonna lie, I was drunk, and I remember being like, I'm not gonna play a single record from the last ten years, and I didn't play a single record, and I had the place going crazy. That's awesome. And I kept looking, at, and I kept saying, just because I was a, I was drunk, I was being a dickhead. Don't I don't need it. Just, I don't need it. Ten as years, I don't, should, I, was like, I don't need it. I don't need it. Every every record I played, I said I don't need it. I was I, I would name the year it came out. I'd be like, I don't need take all that shit. I was like, I don't need it. <laughs> as you should. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. I love that. You know that, what I mean? That separates um, the, the weeks from the monsters, man. I think something that I think there's an I think there's an energy of confidence that you can feel from when you walk in and you look at the DJ. Like th there's certain faces that I I've made or that I see DJs make when when something when they're uncomfortable. Where, whether it's equipment, whether it's, yeah, they're, they're getting googly eyed yeah. and they're like, or, or when they're sweating trying to look through a record because they yeah. don't know what to play next. You can see that. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, yeah, they're not, they're not comfortable. Like, they, they're, they might be a little new. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but then, and then there's like, like I use the prepare feature a lot in Serato. Same. I tell people all the time, I'm always 10 songs ahead of the crowd. Mm hmm. 
So if I'm searching, it's because I'm searching from what's happening in 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you feel same. what I'm saying? Like, same. So, and that's confidence. And that confidence comes from what? Experience. Experience. And so that's what I'm saying. You're that's that's veteran shit. shit. Versus you, dig, novice shit. you dig, you're a digger. Yeah, we dig. So sometimes you're like, oh shit, I can use that for later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you put it in the prepare, and, and it just yeah. and it hangs there. And I'm yeah. like, I'll get to it if I get to it. If not, yeah. fuck it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But then there's dudes who, oh my god, the, the, where I'm like, I'm like watching like opening DJ. I'm watching, and they're like, bro, like they're trying to just look for the next fucking record. I'm like, damn, son. I'm like, yeah. I'm so, ten songs ahead. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah I'm dude, like, I do I'm that a lot. I'm like, I'm I'm way ahead. Like I'm trying to create memorable moments. Like you know, I put myself in. Like another thing too is I I was a partier. I used to party. I used to be the dancer in the in the middle. I used to be that guy. You're, so, you're, you're a pop locker? What do, you, what do we got? Yeah, I used to pop, pop lock. I used to dance like Michael Jackson. A lot of Michael Jackson's my guy. So, yeah, yeah, you know I know. what I'm saying? So we can get it on the pod if yeah. you want to. No, you pop. look like a pop locker. Yeah, you know, moonwalk, all that shit. Um, that's, that was sometimes. But I used to be the guy in the middle of the dance floor. I used to be the guy dancing and, and battling people, dancing with the girls. You know what I'm saying? So I had that experience, you know, of being in that So that's like you said It's also good to go out And actually feel the records And feel what's going on In the club Cause like You know that, that is That's a, a big that, one That's important like, like that's why it is good Yeah it is good to go out sometimes Cause then you're like Like I remember There's been a few times Where um I've gone out And I'm like Okay I play this record too But damn man I should play it longer Yeah You know what I'm saying Where I'm like yeah. damn Like they, they, they played the second verse And I, and I kinda like it Yeah mm -hmm. and, I, and, then I, and then I come back And change my, my flow You know what I'm saying Or like or even uh, some songs that like you would oh, never I would play. Nev I would I would, never yeah. thought to play that all the time. Yeah, and I'm like, oh shit, wow. That's that crazy. happened with me with um with Crazy in Love. A guy just kept playing it, and then it went to the Jay Z verse. So I was like, hold mm, on, wait, wait. I don't wait. play the Jay Z verse. So this is what I do. What I do is I'll play the 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 chorus, the thing, and you skip to the Jay Z verse. Young and and you skip, you skip after it. that is got me looking oh. so crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, then it goes go to, to the, the chorus. Bridge. You get to the bridge. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that, so that. I do, I do. Uh, 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 so I go into the and yeah. then, uh, nah, Beyonce's verse is cold too, though. Her it is, but is you cold. know what? It, it like, but the bridge is, yeah, yeah that's yeah, like yeah, a. Yeah. But you keep, See now you're 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 changing and you're my not, mind right you're now. You're not gonna play that song that long. You're not no, gonna play, to play all of it. No, no that's too, that's too and, much. And yeah. for me, it's just like okay, the Beyonce's cool, but that's what people usually hear. They don't hear that into that. You I'm, know st what I'm, I'm, I'm still on that this weekend, by the yeah, way. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> no. So, uh, so, uh, what Malcolm Xavier taught me from DC shit, and he said he got it. From, you, you remember the episode? He, uh, when I had him on the podcast, we talked about this, and he said he got it from Jerome Baker III, who's a very well respected DJ um, from DC as well. Shout out to him. Um, of like mostly playing bridges, especially for like the 2000s shit. Like, bridges were so big. Like, I think about like a lot of like Pharrell produced joints, Neptune's produced joints, where like, like when I think of like Senorita, or yeah. like like I go just straight to, um, to the bridge. Yeah. And after he told me that, I've definitely like instilled that in like my style, and like I especially for like parties like Silk and shit. Dude, yeah. yeah. Like, you're you're fa yeah. fancy. Huge. Yeah, yeah. Did I give I'm, you that edit? Yeah. Did I drop that on the Patreon yet? I'm still I'm still Fuck. waiting on okay. my Gmail. So, you just heard it? Okay, okay. The, so, no, no, but like you, you do it, and no, I'm no, like, no. so no. yeah. So I so this is what I do with, with fancy is I'll play the cor I'll, I'll mix into the chorus. So, so for those who know, you know, yeah, nail done. My my ladies are rocking, and then it goes straight into the go Cinderella, go yeah. Cinderella, oh god, the mm. lipstick and Cinderella, go, go, go. Yep. go. Go and then back to the chorus and then the rest of the joint and like again like that's a moment not, though yeah it's a moment so if I'm on the mic being like oh my latest go Cinderella like we're Cinderella. missing like, so much parts of these songs that are so huge you know because yeah. we're especially now DJs that want to be in and out and slam shit and they're not let they're not letting that vibe big, people, big bridge guy you got to understand that people in their cars most of, a lot of the times they're listening to the whole track facts so they fall in love with these certain parts of the songs yeah. that you know that's why like yep. when I play Poison I'm always it's Driving me, yeah. I, I go straight to that part too. My, yeah, my, yeah, I go to straight the, to the end of the last da, 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 one. Da, 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 yeah, yes, da, da. that's exactly what I do because it yeah, creates yeah, yeah. that roller coaster, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. so, they're singing it, and so yeah, is uh, yeah, um, that, mister. Because that girl is da, 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 back to the beginning, da, 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 da. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, another, another uh, bridge first edit I have is uh, Sunshine by Lil Flip. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. then it goes, you don't have to be in love. We, we can that's just be a huge fun. part of the song. Yeah, but it's so I, deep into the song I that no one's really the going. Part of the song yeah, for my, me. that's why. Yeah. So I believe the same thing. That's why I made that version because I was like, yeah, uh, like I, I don't know, like uh, something about um, 
Sometimes hitting the cues, like maybe because of the way, like sometimes I don't know if I'm getting too specific. Sometimes they start singing before, before the it happens, beat. so that yeah. you hear that you skip it. Right. So yeah. I, right, I need right. to make a version where it just Smart. goes straight into yep. it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and live in that too, like know know how to beat count for the new DJs. Like know how to know what a what a That's you big. know what a four bar eight bar yes. would know how DJing one, is, two, is a lot of math. Three, four, a lot of it is just math. You know, now yeah, for yeah. me, like it's automatic. It's yeah, it's automatic, yeah. and that came from DJing with CDs. That mm. came from that. Mm. I had to know when the chorus start. Even like, you know, when they had the awkward intros where it's not a full four, yeah. it's like you a have, half. You have to something. figure out where. Yeah. So when I do, so I on Serato. Okay, this is uh now we're, this is nerdy Serato shit. Um, for those on Serato, this is um this helped me a lot with my queuing process and 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 process. Is I'll find where I wanted to drop in, and then using B jump go four backwards, mm. and so now I know that that's basically what a, the, the four the four bar intro would be and it would put the cue back. there so now when yeah. i'm mixing i know that if i start there it will fall in where yeah. i want it to be yeah you know what i'm saying so there no where the one is knowing that yeah know where the like one is no. so, so i'll start even though um that's not where the obviously the first beat is like i'll i'll change my grid so that where i want it to fall is one even and then so it'll all be like negative four negative eight behind it a good thing about it is mobamba when you like when you're going into it's the, awkward it's playing like, it oh fuck yeah some people do it on the one you're not supposed to do that on the yeah. one it goes you're supposed to go it goes if it goes boom, oh fuck yeah so people do doing it they're playing it here yeah. so it's off you know what i'm yeah, saying but yeah, yeah. yeah i know what you gotta about. learn you gotta learn that you gotta be able to that's why i scratch that one in <laughs> <Yeah>. that's <laughs> but, why yeah. but circling back to your point where most of these people are listening to these full records in their car one of my biggest mentors dan campbell shout out to danny cuts he's a big uh he really talks about slow rocking and there's times in the night, and there's definitely specific records where you want to let it play out. Yeah. And rather than like skip the, through the song because there's so much gold in the song. Um, yeah. And there's times where you're like ripping through records. Yeah. And I think uh, what makes a really good DJ is to know the records that pacing. you can rip through. Yeah, yep, pacing, pacing. Yep. Know the records that you can rip through. Yep. And know the records that, okay, chill, take a deep breath, hands off for a minute. Let the I, crowd really get engaged with it, and was, he's uh, huge with that. I was just talking about that with someone, and I forgot the fucking song example that I used, but there was one song, whatever song I used was, the first verse is more known if not at, oh, this is how we do it. The first verse is just as known if not more known than the chorus. Mm -hmm. This is how we do it. Yeah. It's Friday. You cannot not play that. Yeah, you have to go into that. Yeah. Like that's not a record where you only play this is no, you have to play that first verse. So I mean that's not the best example because it's only the first verse, but there are certain songs where the 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 choruses like, I mean or the for example verses. for example, Wannabe by the Spice Girls. Yeah, you have to, you're you're you have to let it ride. Yeah. One. I I, pl I played the entire song. Yeah. What you think about that? Nah, you yeah. know, like that's that's that yeah. that song is like Here's a story. Uh, yeah. is it, you wanna get with me? You got to play you that. Have to play that. Have to play. Yeah. Dancing Queen, I play the whole thing. I love that song. I yeah. play the whole fucking thing. So like there are certain yeah, you, and you just got to and, and but what does that come with? Experience. Experience knowing the music. Yeah. Like me, seeing like, seeing reaction. Yeah. Oh, shit. I cut this too early and everyone got mad at me. Now I know mm. next time not to do that. Exactly. Or, you will see people go, oh. yeah. you'll see them like kind of like, "No." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. why I tell people a lot of too like don't rely on edits all the time. Yeah. Don't rely on like you know you know these mashups like some people yeah. like there's certain songs like or or just no you know there's certain songs I'll that you play, don't need the intro I'll play the I'll play the mashup first or a section of the mashup and then go into the original I'll do that sometimes but I think there's certain songs that you shouldn't like I think Mo Bamba is a good example you shouldn't play the intro version of no Mo Bamba. absolutely not no. because the that, um, so iconic the, da, 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 you, I can yeah. just play that da, da, part da, da, da. yeah. The first two, the first two, three notes. I'll do a transition where I cut over and yeah, they hear yeah. that, and then I go back. The, and the and the date show ticket. That's part yeah. of the. Yeah. I, that's part. Like you have to hear that first. So yeah. when it's just an intro edit where it takes that out and it's just. Boom, 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 yeah. I got. It's not the same. It's it doesn't not. hit mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. And then and then especially when it was like super. Hot, I I pulled it back up. They took it back. The same with Dior. Yeah. So like uh wait wait uh trap house mom. You can do it from the like, well, you, so, yeah, 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 you need to hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the intro version cuts all of that out. You right. know what a song for, right. for, for me is that is uh, uh, Bosi. Bosi, I can't, I won't oh, play it. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 you need going it. Going into it with a thing, it's not. It's nope. not the same hit. It's not the same. It's not the it same. It doesn't hit the same. There's right. some song you got, and you got to. You just got to like you know. Don't get me wrong. I use my intro edits like, um, especially if I'm doing you know acapella outs and stuff yeah. like that. Like, Facts, uh, yep. I, like that's why I was telling people I was like you need 
intro edits if you're really doing shit. But like I, I've seen some DJs where everything is an intro, and there's some yes. songs where like again like a Dior or like a or like a Swag Surf yeah. or like a, mm. a, our International Players Club yeah. where it's the intro, and I'm like, nah, I need the oh. yeah, and yeah, I need the you know or the uh, what's it Welcome to Atlanta. Ding. Ding. Next episode. Yeah, next episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those shit. These are, are all examples of like lean back, lean back. Yeah. Like, yeah. These yeah. are all I examples of like all the time. yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Or um, uh, what's it called balling. We fly. Yeah, the yeah, like, yeah, 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 I never go into just we fly. If I do, I'm bringing it back. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, all, these are all just off the top of our heads of songs it's, that, yeah. like, it's you just funny. shouldn't It's do. funny because, like, obviously early on, I, I did say, like, yeah, get on a record pool. But it's funny because I, I started off doing the YouTube rips and stuff like yeah. that. And then I got on the record pool. And then I circled back. There was, like, a real resurgence where I'm like, there's definitely some situations that we just talked about where yeah. you do need to have the original record. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Download the always download the original as well. Yeah. Always yeah, download yeah, the yeah, original yeah. as well. Don't yeah. just get used to playing intros and outros. Yeah, yeah. Cause there's just some song again, and especially when you get to like the quote unquote like urban like like if you're playing a Negro anthem and it's an intro, you can't you like you can't be playing the intro edit of Revolution to Kirk Franklin, bro. Yeah. You need to play the exactly. Revolution League. Exactly. You know, like these are all like this is off the top of our heads, bro. Off the top. Yeah. That we're not we even just, really. That was up. a set. That was just yeah. That, that was that whole set right there could have ran could have ran you like yeah. a real good day party. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like so. Anyway, DJs, if you're playing only intro edits, like start not. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Have some variation in what you're playing. Yeah. Like know, pacing is big. Know what's in your laptop and, and, and get organized. Variety is key. Yep. That's all I got from the guest listeners. Thank you everybody for submitting um Thank you. questions and topics. We really appreciate it. Um yep. and we're all, and I think I think uh we're doing you know, we're doing this bi weekly, so I think um we'll be doing opening it up to uh the listeners for any topics and questions. Uh Probably every episode. If we get none, that, that's all. Cool. That's all good. If we get a bunch, that's all good as well. We appreciate you guys uh, sending these in, um, and that's all I got, guys. Anything else you guys want to mention? Anything you want to plug uh, before we wrap this up? No, that that's about it, man. Where, where are you guys at this weekend? We're together at Bodega on a Friday. On a Friday for the game. Go Celtics. Go Celtics. Celtics awesome. and six. Yeah. Um, I and then I have venue Saturday. I have Slacker at Icon Thursday, and then I have Brunch So Hard on Sunday. Mm. Love that. Icon I'm, on Saturday as well for me. Nice. So. I'm actually out on Block Island this weekend. Oh, I love that. Nice. Yeah, so. That seems like such a good that, That's not your first time there this year, is it? First time this year. Oh, this year. Yep. Yeah, 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 I did oh, two sick. last year. Awesome spot. Yellow yeah, yeah. Kittens. That's going to be a vibe. Always, always good vibes out there. Love that. So, love that. Yeah, so, weekend. you know, hit us up. Um, you know, fingers live on Instagram. Cami underscore V three M's. Uh, give me snacks on Instagram. Hit us up if you have any questions. Um, how you feel about the podcast. Um, if someone offended you let us know i don't fucking care to be honest but <laughs> share, uh, share, let us share to all your friends please share um if you know a dj if you know someone who's thinking about being a dj this is the podcast for them um if you just like hearing our voices this is the podcast for them as well send it to your girlfriend she wants to hear me Sheesh. um and just and, and let us know follow at dope entertainment official as well um and happy valley check them out tell them we sent you um 20 off an accessory in their store in east boston using the code dope and we'll see you next time, guys. Thank you so much. One more thing. DJs, oh. brush your fucking teeth. <laughs> brush your fucking teeth. Mike Hygiene. It's wanted. It's needed. <laughs> Shit. Ginger. Ginger.